Showdown 15, one of the biggest games on the AFL calendar. Always a great contest, always plenty of fireworks. Good evening, Matthew Campbell with you. Joining me is Chris McDermott. Chris, there are always big games, we always look forward to them. But the first time for a while, there's a big difference between the two sides on the AFL ladder. Absolute massive difference between the two teams. Adelaide Footy Club backs well and truly to the wall. They've got to come out fighting from the start tonight. Big occasion game tonight. Port Adelaide going to this game as favourite. Four from four so far this year at Amy Stadium. Their record in the showdown is excellent. They've won the last five, even though they've been close. But they've had their problems with injury so far this year. Yeah, losing Josh Carr hurts their midfield, but they've been able to replace him with Roger James. Hard, tough, and they go down to the wire. They're a very deep and strong team. We know how good Tred Ray is. He's got a fairly good support cast as well. Brett Ebert, Brett and Lade, uh, Surgeon, all capable of kicking goals. The Crows have to hold this forward line to 12 or 13 goals if they're going to win this game tonight. Through the midfield, you mentioned that they've had their problems there with injury, but Kane Corns and Peter Bergwin have been excellent. Corns career best last week, 35 touches. Kingsley's always good. Schofield in great form. So much depth, so much talent you'd hardly know they've got a player out injured down back chad corns he's one of the twin peaks one at each end he's been outstanding as well big and strong hard for the crows to match up on port adelaide's tools michael wilson also in great form gavin wanganin will he be thrown forward will he play back great flexibility in the port adelaide lineup and the respective interchange for port adelaide thurston's cochran jew and Poulton. so plenty of options there for coach mark williams for adelaide Rare for them, they've played twice so far here at Amy Stadium, they've lost, lost both games, it's pretty rare for them. Very rare and uh, in danger of losing three in a row, Andrew McLeod's 200th game as he goes through the banner. They've just got to start so well tonight and uh, goal scoring's been a real problem for them, they've got to find somebody up forward. Wayne Carey, a big occasion player, he needs to stand up tonight, as does Scotty Welsh, who is a potential five or six goal kicker, hasn't done much this year, back in tonight, so he's got to perform well. Ken McGregor kicked five against Richmond two weeks ago, we know how good McLeod and Rusciuto are, but tonight they'll have to be at their very, very best. No doubt. They're the two kings. Rashido McLeod got to get 30 plus touches tonight if the Crows are going to win this game of footy. We take a look at the Adelaide back line. Well, you think this is where they have to win the game? No doubt. Some young kids back there. Trent Henschel improving week in, week out. A real player of the future. Marty Matner comes in. He's hard. He's tough. He'll shut his player down. But that back half has got to hold port to that 13 goal tally. Gallagher, Bode, Hudson and Nathan Bopp make up the Adelaide interchange. They're always fantastic games, the showdown. Always a pressure week for both coaches, Mark Williams and Gary Ayres. Tonight on the boundary, Tiffany Cherry and Mark Aston will be looking after the respective camps, and they both caught up with the coaches earlier on. Here we go again, Gary. Yeah, couldn't come around quick enough after last week, Mark. So, yeah, what we're looking for, obviously, is strength, because our season's on the line. And if there's ever a time that this club wants to show something, it's got to be tonight. Can you recall a more important showdown in terms of uh, for the Crows since you've been there? Probably back to 2000, which was my first one, and it just was something that I'd never experienced anyway. And obviously what the club had to do was win that one because I think at that stage we were in similar circumstances, one and five, and with Mark Rusciuto and Andy McLeod playing exceptionally well, we got over the line, so that would be great if it happened again tonight. Is the coach a bit edgy? Oh, I'm always edgy before a game. I think it's always good to have some nerves and this is a game that we're, we're really looking forward to and if we're on song we'll see it in the first five or ten minutes of the first quarter. Good luck. Thanks mate. Well the big match tonight is the showdown and your team's been, the depth really been tested, you've got a number of big name players out of the side. Yeah we have and uh, you know Josh Carr being the last and latest one with uh, Brent Montgomery, but um, you know Josh with his broken jaw is uh, really disappointing to miss a, such a leader as he's uh, shown to be this year. And uh, you know as tough as he is, we're going to really miss him in the in the centre square. Well, Matthew Primus is one of the one of the big names out, and Dean Brogan. How important is he? He's uh, to the game tonight. Obviously, the big battle will be in the midfield. Yeah, Matthew Clark's a wonderful ruckman, and uh, you know we're lucky to have Brogan and and Laid both playing pretty well. So. Uh, you know, they'll, they'll have to play well against Clark. They've got some great uh, on balls. I, I reckon they're going to play, uh, you know, McLeod and Edwards and uh, Rusciuto in the centre square. So they're going to really give it to us with their best names in the centre square. All right, well, the South Australian bagging rights are on the line. Thanks for joining us. Best of luck, Mark. Thanks very much. And uh, we'll be back straight after the break for the showdown. It's a 15 showdown here at Amy Stadium. Don't go away. Sunday is big first run TV on 10. The special time, the countdown to the finals is on. American Idol. At 7.30, the housemates have some secrets of their own. Will it affect the first nominations in a special Big Brother? 
At 8.30, a case so bizarre, it'll have Detective Goran's stunt. All new criminal intent. At 9.30, it premieres the new smash hit US drama, NCIS. Sunday is Big First Run TV on 10. Discount City Carpet Stock Clearance Sale guarantees Adelaide's lowest prices on its massive range of carpets, timber flooring, rugs and vinyls. No matter what price you get elsewhere, Discount City Carpets will beat it guaranteed. Discount City Carpets Superstores and Super Warehouse. Stock clearance on now. Your eyes can now breathe much easier with night and day contact lenses. Soft contact lenses you can sleep in. Ask your optometrist if night and day lenses are right for you. So breathable, the difference is night and day. Matthew, is it true you're up for sale? Yeah. How do you feel about that? Well, how would you feel if you had been sold for two bucks? Yeah, Matty, what about you? Get your kids all 16 AFL captains for two dollars each with a token from the advertiser and Sunday Mail. Getting ready for today's big game? Well, get ready for more AFL action on widescreen weekend. If you're still watching the game on a standard television, you're not getting the whole picture. With a widescreen plasma, you not only experience more game, more action, more excitement, but you receive the highest quality digital picture. So for the best advice on widescreen plasmas, talk to the guys at Harvey Norman. Widescreen, the only way to view the game. Congratulations to Andrew McLeod, 200 games, the dual Norm Smith medalist made his debut in round 6, 1995, and he would love to win the West End medal to go with his already impressive collection of medals tonight if the Crows could get up and win. It's a big night for everyone here at Amy Stadium, a virtual sellout crowd. It's a big night for our boundary riders, Mark Aston and Tiffany Cherry. Good evening. Hello, guys. Welcome along. Wonderful atmosphere down here and a huge crowd of sellout huge story floating around about Andrew McLeod we know as you guys just said he's playing his 200th game but the word is that he will start when you're in the middle I don't reckon he's done that for the last three or four weeks so a great way for Andrew McLeod to uh, celebrate his 200th game tip and Mark the most recent showdown in round 22 last year saw Peter Bergwijn win the West End medal for best on ground tonight he breaks Stephen Paxman's club games record he lines up for his 139th match for Port Adelaide we wish him all the best Thanks, Tiff. Thanks, Mark. And uh, 139 games. A man that played 403 <laughs> AFL games is Kevin Bartlett. KB, welcome. Well, it's, uh, it's going to be a great game. I, I would say on the score of probability, you'd have to say Adelaide's got a chance of winning because they've lost the last 7 and 10 out of 14. Sooner or later, they're going to crack it. Well, I think given the fact, Chris, that uh, the last five have been within three goals, they probably should have snared one along the way. Look, they certainly should have. They've had their opportunities to win them over the last seven uh, games. But tonight, never more important, never more important showdown than we've got tonight. Adelaide's season and Adelaide's credibility well and truly on the line. Yes, it is one and five for Adelaide after six rounds. It is a beautiful night for football, currently 16 degrees. It was a glorious day in Adelaide this afternoon. No excuse for a big crowd here to enjoy the night, as they always do for showdowns. Well, they're, they're missing so many good players, aren't they? Josh Carr, we heard Mark Williams talk about that before, and Josh Franco, Damien Hardwick, Byron Pickett's not there. Matthew Primus is not there, so the Crows get their chance. I know that Goodwin's not there and Hart's not there, but if they're ever going to have a crack at Port Adelaide, surely it's tonight. Well, you'd think Port are vulnerable, but their depth is so strong, and uh, they've been able to replace those key players. Roger James comes in tonight. He is such a great uh, midfielder. He'll certainly run it on and off the bench, but a quality player. The Crows have got blokes. Goodwin, Hart, Smart, uh, Tawny, Mark Stevens not playing tonight, so their depth is hurt as well. But expect it to be physical tonight, boys, and the Crows have to take it up to Port Adelaide. Well, Chad Torns is on McGregor, and Tyson Edwards has gone forward. Chris, you thought that may have happened. Yeah, he's certainly got to... The Crows have got to get some blokes inside their forward 50 that can kick a goal. Tyson Edwards, disappointing last week. Important game for him. He's a leader and needs to uh, stand up as well tonight. 180 games experience. Going to the forward square on his own. So a move there by Gary Ayres to have Edwards one out in the goal square. Kingsley will mark him up. Listen to that crowd roar for showdown 15. It's underway. 
Clark was in the ruck and here's Kane Corns paddling it out in front of him. Burgoyne goes off the ground. It'll be hard and fast early. Play the percentages early and even does so. Down is throwing quickly. I mean Perry picking up Treadray. Yeah, we suspected it as McGregor goes forward. That's the Crow's only option is Perry on Treadray. He's got to do a good job, especially early. Otherwise, Gary Ayers will be forced to make some moves. Uh, and that'll be um, McGregor back. That's as hard a job as you can get in the AFL. Warren Treadray. Clark, quick give. Slips it to Rusciuto. Long ball. McGregor. One arm. He's already got one on Chad Corns. Terrific start from him. Wheels around the goal square. Carey back. Edwards! Couldn't mark it. Ball's still alive. Wilson wants the boundary. Finds it just in time. Great start by Kenny McGregor. One on one. Duel against Chad Corns. Held his ground. Took the mark. Toby Thurston there. Jared Colton. Part of Port Adelaide's depth on the interchange bench. What a buzz around the ground at Football Park. Fox footy. Here's a chance. Corns didn't really hit the target. He was looking for Wanganeen. Toss back in. Wayne Carey, there's been a lot of talk about his future. If he's going to stand up tonight, could be the night. Wakeland's got the job, the two number twos. McGregor worked his way to the front. Quick snap. And Stenglein has kicked the goal. Stratco are passing on the savings in our neighbourhood fun catalogue. New Good Neighbour Wave Lock Fencing, only $79.95 a panel. Or with extra screen top, just $134.95 a panel. Stratco colour fence sheets, great value at $12.45 each. Heritage fencing, from a low $62.95. And Stratco post and rail fencing, only $31.50 a metre. Bargains for the whole neighbourhood at Stratco. What you need today. <clears throat> great start by the Crow. Stengline, just his second goal for 2004. McGregor involved already twice. What a buzz around Amy Stadium. It's a Port Adelaide home game, but as you can expect for a showdown, plenty of Adelaide supporters here. Ebert couldn't put, take possession. Schofield off the side. McLeod breaks. Edwards on the lead. Got him. Well, what do you think, Chris? One on one. Kingsley and Edwards out of the goal square. Yeah, not a good matchup. Uh, Tyson Edwards, for a little bloke, plays very well tall. Has a great mark overhead. Can certainly lead. He's got some pace. Good matchup if you're uh, Gary Ayres sitting in the uh, coach's box. And normally a pretty reliable yes. kick too. Port yep. Adelaide started nervously. A couple of handling errors, missing some targets. The Crows have got to get off to a flyer. This is a big kick. Scoreboard pressure in Portland a lot like tonight. Five goals, three for the season coming into this game. Kick from about 35 metres. Right behind it. Just pulls it left. Not a good finish really. And as Chris mentioned, usually very reliable on set shots. Certainly is. He's a better kick than that last week against Geelong. We saw Adelaide burn the ball four or five times in front of goal. Proved pretty costly in the end. They've got to kick those goals if they're going to win this game of footy. They need everything going for them. A bad miss from Tyson Edwards. Kingsley brings the ball into play. Finds Corns. What a season. He is having it centre-half back. To Burgoyne. Club game's record holder tonight. Back to Corns. Touch of the fumbles. Does well. Hurries the kick, kicks the ball out towards the centre wing. Ebert got pushed out of the contest by Doughty. Good young player, Ebert. Here's Carey's got it. No advantage, Wayne. Now the ball is coming back, and we can hear quite clearly no advantage to the Crows. Doughty is on centre wing. Pumps the ball in. Big pack of players. Coming out was John Cox. Couldn't take it. Edwards did well. Clark does a 360. Stands and delivers to the square. Danger here for the power. Getting back was McGregor. Corns does well under pressure. Gives it across. James charges out of the back line. Hammers the ball along the ground looking for the boundary line. Massey. Can he make ground in front of Matna? Surgeon was there as well. Here's a chance now. Bassett rockers the ball to Massey from the half back line to the half forward line. John Cock couldn't take it. Burden at ground level. Pulled off the ball. Good play by McGregor. Taken by Stengline. Working hard now. Chance for Carey. The King's got it. Inside the centre square. He's caught. Pesciuto caught high. No free doubt. He loose ball. Needs support. Gets it from Perry. He's got the big job playing on Treadray. Goes wide. The race is on Stengline. And Burgoyne to McLeod in game number 200. He's got Corns as his shadow. 
What a contest that will be. Yeah, there's a matchup. We thought Kane Corns on uh, Andrew McLeod. Corns last week with 35 touches, getting plenty of the ball, but he is the only player that can run with and keep up with Andrew McLeod. Has done uh, the job on him before. A couple of youngsters on the Adelaide bench and Hudson and Bock only have a few games between them. Here's Port Adelaide, who really haven't got any flowers yet. Nice kick, though, from Burgoyne to Cassisi. Player through the middle is Schofield. As you'd expect for a showdown, the intensity is there. But at the moment, they've let Schofield run free. Burgoyne was his target. That's Sean Burgoyne. Massey came back to help out. And Chris Massey's got some real pace. A lot of people don't, don't think that because of the way he plays, but he has. Now, got some good pace, been in pretty good form too over the last couple of weeks. Been a shining light for the Crows in defence. Just needs his body to hold up and... Uh, he has been a very good player. What about the noise going around the <laughs> ground? It's just unbelievable here at Football Park. Here's Port Adelaide. Salopec. Burgoyne round the body. Hasn't got enough on it. Treadway. Second chance. Goal. AGL is turning on the gas. And right now, existing AGL customers who accept a gas and electricity plan from AGL will receive $50 off their gas and a $50 AGL Energy Shop voucher. You. you could also save more on your electricity. Oh, Friday, about to turn on to AGL and start saving, call 131245 today. AGL, Australian for gas and electricity. Well, there is that man on screen. Warren Treadray has bid at 24 goals for the season. Just coming in just to watch it, okay? Taking the most marks what in the competition. Aggressive when somebody says something to you. And there's Darren Goldspink. He's having a go at Kane Corns, isn't he? Yes, don't get aggressive every time someone has a crack at you, he said. Interesting boy to see Brett Burton playing loose inside the back 50 for, uh, for the Crows. Just a loose kick behind the play. Crows 1-1-7, lead Port. One goal, laid went up early, taken by Clark, read it well. Pumps the ball inside 50. John Cock came through hard. Wanganeen with those clean hands. Burgoyne's been lively in this first quarter. Gets it back to Bishop. Finds Corn. Backtracks. Round the corner. Just tumbles into the arms of Wanganeen to Burgoyne. Goes wide. And standing his ground was Brogan. Marks in front of Clark. That is such an important duel. We heard Mark Williams say before the game. Here's a chance. McLeod dumps the ball forward. Big fist away. It was strong play. Taken by Matna. Hammers the ball. John Cock. Loose play up. It's all set up. Tyson Edwards. Over the top. And kicks a goal. McGregor. Tremendous play. If you're tired of watching your favourite game on a small screen, then think big. And think Truscott Hi-Fi. For a big range of big screen TVs, widescreen TVs and plasma panels, look in Truscott Hi-Fi. Big brand, low price and best advice. LG 111cm widescreen, only $24.95. And magnificent Philips plasma panel, only $4.99. Truscott Hi-Fi. Adelaide's lowest prices with up to 24 months interest-free terms. McGregor with his first, and you don't often get him that easy in a showdown. A little handball over the top. Crows back out to a seven-point lead. Stengline hasn't cleared it from the contest. Good hands. Carey got it from Rusciuto. The Senior players combining. McGregor probably should have taken that one on the chest. Oh, did it well. Still kept it alive, though. Wilson slips. Stolen by John Cock. And has kicked a behind. Gee, we were behind that. It looked pretty close. Looked a goal from here, didn't it? But <laughs> great work from Kenny McGregor. Went to ground, had the presence of mind to knock the ball back to an opponent. Great work from Kenny McGregor. Probably better known as a defender, but doing some great work as a forward for the Crows over the last few weeks. Four scoring shots to one. Inside 56 to one. So they've had their chances, Adelaide. And they make it another one here. Port Vaux to clear. Wangeline. Out to Peter Burgoyne. Up through the middle. Ebert. Oh, good, good solid collision. pass from Stengline. Ball still with Port though. Schofield. So often in space. Can go wide if he wants to. Got to back himself to go on his own. The pass is ill-directed though. Henschel. Under pressure. Solid. Back to Burton. Jericho on the wing. Ball goes over his head. He should get the run of it. Oh, there's some pressure there. And he's kept it in. 
Saber. Jericho comes back. Didn't panic, or did he? They've still got the ball, Adelaide. Burton off one step. Three on one, though. Should suit Corns, and oh. it does. Corns on the stretch, and some rebound play. Gets it from Schofield. Charges the edge of the centre square. Inside 50. Pulled off the ball was Massey. Clever tap. Copeland Burgoyne. This could bounce through. Treadray has got two. should be kicking himself for not taking it to an RAA approved repairer in the first place. Number 25 for the year for Treadray. The assist, a classic from Sean Burgoyne. Certainly was, and Port Adelaide haven't got their game going yet, but look dangerous when they get the ball inside 50. Blade has a look, Clark down to Stengline. That's his target at the moment in the centre square. Oh. Walsh! Well, we've seen McGregor take a one-hander. Scotty Welsh has joined the act. Class player too, Scotty Welsh. Hasn't had the best of seasons so far. Once again, injury interrupted. But you've got to like that matchup if you're Gary Ayres. Welsh is capable in the air, certainly capable off the deck. Can kick a miraculous goal. Michael Wilson, a very good player, but just a little bit short. Scotty Welsh needs to kick this goal. He was the leading goal kicker back in the year 2000. He's got two for the year. Make it three. Another one to Adelaide. Killer twists, a killer night on 10. All new 830 Sunday. Webster's throat was cut. One crime. The murder had ritualistic touches. One victim. Thomas is the only one. One clever detective with a bizarre case on his hands. Killers might have thought placing the body there would protect them. Could this be the first case ever to stop Detective Gorham? There's no way you could kill him and get away with it. All new criminal intent, 830 Sunday. And there's the change. Crows by 8 points, 3 2 20. Port, two straight goals, 12. Clark will come charging in. Jumps right into Brogan. Stengline, so good in close. Kicked off the ground by Burgoyne. Out to Bassett. Comes away for the Crows. Heads wide. And McGregor running very hard in front of Corns. Couple of early marks. Great for the confidence. Edwards from behind. James gets the ball across. It was clever play to Cassisi. Much improved player. Payne Corns tied up in the tackle by Edwards. Great tackling from Tyson Edwards last week. The Crows could not lay a tackle. This they did. It was broken far too easily. Tyson Edwards tonight setting the standard. Boundary throw in. 60 metres around from the Crows goal. Rusciuto caught in the tackle. Thank God, good tackle. Two goals to Warren Treadray and singles for the Crows to McGregor, Welsh and Stengline. Clark getting his hands on the ball, laid. Thought he had it and lost it. Strong play by James, tried to bullock his way out of trouble. So it's a ball up on 50. Gary Ayres and Mark Williams working the phones. Laid. Does well. The juggler. Great Caught in the tackle, tackle by Rusciuto. The raging bull had him. McLeod. Tried a bit of magic. Squeezed up on the boundary line. That's the barometer for the Crows when they're tackling hard, chasing hard, doing the one percenters. They are on song. Andrew McLeod, 200th game tonight. Kane Corns doing a pretty reasonable job on him in the early minutes of this game. So it's a boundary throw in on 50. Crows lead by eight. Interesting to see uh, uh, Nathan Bassett following Brenton Laid all over the ground tonight. Laid. Just laid it off to Corns. Back to Jew. Such a thumping kick. Goes wide. Great vision. And finds Laid at half back. Good running by the big man because he knocked it back to Kane Corns and then took off to the wing, knowing that Brogan was there from where he left. So 
So they're working hard, the Port Adelaide big men. And this is Roger Jones. I have to say, one of my favourite players in the AFL. Great to see him back. Yeah, had trouble with the groin, but looks like he's moving pretty well tonight. Jew started on the bench. Treadway, so off in the target. Sean Burgoyne also. Ball at ground level. Sean Burgoyne, Bassett goes back, throws in the numbers. Uh, Sean Burgoyne, little hand on it, kept him alive. He's still going. He's still going. What can he do? Give it back to Treadway. Oh, he hooked it too far. He wouldn't have thought that. You just get the feeling they've got a nice little relationship there, haven't they, Burgoyne and Treadway? Certainly do. Brett Lade comes from the ground. Toby Thurston comes on, just showing the great depth Port Adelaide have. Danger spot here for the Crows, though. Boundary throw in Perry towards the goal front. Rusciuto slipped it to McLeod. They needed some class there and they found it. Wobbles the kick towards the boundary line. Not going to make it. Thurston's good hit. Treadray stands, thinks, delivers. Oh. Spots up the body oh. and finds Cassisi. Well, we talk about Treadray, Chris. He's kicked a couple of goals, been involved a few times. Hasn't really taken a mark. It's all been at ground level. Certainly has, and that's his beauty. He's such, so good at ground level as well. Good either side of his body. We know how dangerous his left leg is. Roger James come from the ground as part of that rotation. They'll need to look after him tonight. Jared Holton comes on. To CC in charge of the ball inside 50 for Port. He's been a bit wayward so far. Two goals, six. From 45. Pretty good off the boot. Likes it. Goal to Port Adelaide. Margin back to two points. Crows 3-2-20, Port Adelaide, three straight goals, 18. That man on screen, Cassisi, has just kicked his third goal of the season. We've played just over 17 minutes in this first quarter. Thumped down that time, been pinched by Kingsley, to Brogan, to Jew, comes out of the centre square, wants to set it up, the run will come, Thurston's had it and lost it. Pinched by Massey, to Perry, they'll share the ball around. Burton finds Massey, comes away from half-back, has to kick hurriedly, he's been crunched. Packer players, Stengline has been handy. Some early touches been marked by Korn. Oh, got the job playing on McLeod here, comes Treadway. Stands and delivers, a big bomb! A big bomb! It's a big goal! He's got three. He's the man to stop. That is the left foot we've been talking about. Warren Treadray again without a mark, but what an influence on this game of footy. Troubled times now for Gary Ayres. The move has to come very soon. He won't want to take Kenny McGregor away from centre half forward. But Port Adelaide overusing for a while. But just, just watch this hit though. This is indicative of a, a showdown. Just watch Stewie Jew come in here. Bang! Fantastic. Thank you very much. Again, they force the turnover. They get the loose ball. They kick a goal. And Warren Treadray on Ian Perry. Oof, it can't last much longer. Three goals to Treadray, yet to take a mark, as I mentioned. Port Adelaide in front for the first time. Peter Burgoyne going wide to Kingsley. Bassett arrives. Kingsley slips, gets up, gives it back to Thurston's. Over the top. Chance for Surgeon, goal square, great mark, outstanding mark, Dean Brogan. Is that Kane Corns in the KB? No apologies. No, no, Brogan, but Corns kicked it They're down kicking, to him. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic mark by Dean Brogan. Backing back into the pack. And all of a sudden, the power with a bit of a lift there, Chris. Yep, out of the middle. They've won the last couple out of the middle. Well, Burgoyne's the man, I think, that's getting so much ball out the middle. Tyson Stengline in charge of the job on him. Burgoyne's had it nine times. Stengline's had it seven, but Burgoyne's done the damage. Brogan with a great contested mark. Should goal. Dean Brogan. 
kick showed the post but still kicks the goal all of a sudden the margin's 10 points to the power yes and they don't need to go inside the forward 50 to be dangerous too often Dean Brogan with a contested mark but not Tread Ray it's Brogan it's laid the options are enormous for Mark Williams and the discipline to hit the head of the square that's the kick knowing you've got a bloke who can take a contested catch Dean Brogan the man on that occasion Well, Peter Burgoyne's doing all the trouble around that centre square. He's had it nine times. Three goals to port in just four minutes. And 12 marks to six in favour of port as well. Brogan in the ruck. There's Burgoyne again. He has got to be stopped. Here's a chance. Ebert slides onto the ball. Picked up by Matna. Comes away from half back. Chris McDermott likes his style of play to Massey who's been busy as well gives it across to Begley so the Crows on the charge inside 50 McGregor has done well leading corns to the ball Kerry's in the square can the King take a mark he's got Wakeland to beat Kerry quick snap he's kicked a goal well, that's team lifting stuff for Wayne Kerry Strong body in front of Wakeland. And maybe still the agility to do the stuff at ground level. Well, he's still got the brain. That's uh, for sure. Maybe the body's going, but the brain is still strong. Again, holds his feet, knows where the goals are. Great reflexes. Kicks an important goal. Chris, he's surprised. We only just, you know, still plenty of time in this first quarter. We've seen nine goals already. Thinking maybe 12 goals might win it. Absolutely. It's, it's a real shootout. Didn't expect it to be a shootout. Don't think the Crows can win if it is. But at the moment, it's a great game of footy. They're hanging in there. We feel if it's a blowout, Port Adelaide the one capable of kicking 20 goals, but the Crows are hanging in tough. Still seven and a half minutes remaining. The margin's just four points as the Roo tries to bang his way through. Gets a free kick. Umpire, Derek Woodcock. He was caught high. And the captain slides it off to Massey. And think about Bert. Stewie Dew does a good job working the mark. Massey's kick. McLeod on the lead. Burton in front. Slipped in. Welsh ducks out of the tackle towards Kerry and we'll have a boundary throw in and a brilliant start to this game down on the boundary Tiff Cherry. Stephen Salopek who's just come on the ground has got some writing written on his hand looked like mum was on uh, his left hand but some trivia on him he broke his tooth at training on Wednesday he was mucking around in the change rooms and actually missed training. So there's the tackle Hudson. Put him up, put him up just under seven minutes left in this first quarter it's been hectic five straight goals to port the lead by four points 4-2 Adelaide 26 the ball up just outside 50 Hudson gets his hands on the ball Cassisi here's Carey hammers the ball back McLeod's playing at full forward now they're chasing McLeod and Tyson Edwards at full forward is a chance for Jericho quick snap out of bounds on the full. It's interesting changing Chris. McLeod and Tyson Edwards at full forward. Yeah, got Welsh playing up the ground. Kerry's virtually playing as a half forward flanker. They've got Welsh playing in a pocket. McGregor at centre half forward. Gary has had to try something different and it's worth a try. Kingsley wanted a kind bounce. John Cock closed very quickly. Forces him over the line for a toss back in. Spoke about the uh, influence of Warren Treadray. Interesting to see Nathan Bassett is the man now for Warren Treadray. Ian Perry had him for a while. Three goals is long enough. Now Nathan Bassett. Stengline has kicked a goal to the square. Jericho! Kicked off the ground by McLeod. It was clever play. Inaccurate. Unfortunately for him, it's out of bounds on the full as we take a look at who's been touching the footy the most and we know how good Peter Burgon's been already Stingline though doing the best for Adelaide this is Kingsley breaking from his defensive 50 pretty open out of side strong take by Surgeon out in front just holds it up for a second waits for the lead it comes now Treadray just Treadray stood two crows went to ground that's how big he is Take a look at this. Bassett right with him. 
Messi doing the right thing, trying to help out. His yeah. courage came in front, and they both go to ground. <laughs> he got sandwiched, but <laughs> and, stood his and ground. he stood his ground. Doughty, wrapped up by Salapeg. Held in, Stephen. Held in, no chance. And by Corin Rowe. Explaining his decision there, spot on. Adelaide leading the clearances. We're just over five minutes remaining. It's a four-point game for Port Adelaide, and they're moving forward once again. Kingsley kept his hands free. Salapic. Good kick, gets plenty of distance around the body. There'll be a whistle there. Play on. Away they go. Salapic, Jew, within range. One step, he'll still get there. To the goal square. Who's alive? Treadway. Still going. Now we'll have a rush behind. He's always in the contest. Even if it hits the ground, the big man can still be dangerous. Just looks dangerous all the time, doesn't he? Just couldn't uh, quite drag the ball back on that occasion. We spoke about Adelaide needing to win the loose footy. They're up 16-4 to with the loose balls. That's where the game will be won and lost tonight. It's been a downfall of Adelaide's over the last couple of weeks. Uh, doing very well in that uh, department tonight. Begley. <laughs> Nearly tripped over the line. Take two. Goes wide. Looking for Hudson. Surgeon. Thurston's there as well. They've got a ball up. So quite opportunity. Just under five minutes left now in this opening quarter. It's been hectic. There's been a huge buzz around the ground since the opening bounce. And it's Port by five oh. points. Burgoyne has been a star. Tried to find Schofield, driven to the ground. They've been sloppy, Port. They've made some uh, poor handling uh, errors. Not normally part of their games. Showing some nerves early in this contest. Rogan versus Hudson. Does well. Gets his hands on the ball. Wins the crumb. Smothered off the boot by Schofield. Five one thirty one Port. Chris, what have you made of Burgoyne v Stengline? I mean, 11 times Burgoyne's had it, but Stengline 8. Far too many for Peter yeah. Burgoyne. Stengline's job is to take him out of the contest. Rusciuto beaten by Doughty, his teammate. Comes away with the ball, close to the line. Carey. Just tries to chip it across. Waited for Jericho. Read it well. Looks pretty lively tonight, Wayne Carey. Yeah, he certainly does. So does this bloke too. He certainly gets around the park. Got great athleticism. Kerry just rushed all the way down to the half forward line. Might be just relishing the fact he's away from the goal square. Yeah. He's got a bit of momentum up. Here's a chance. Stengline couldn't take it. Laid was brave. And there's the Brownlow medalist, Mark Rusciuto, taking a break. Part of their policy, the Crows, they do rest Mark Rusciuto. Last week he came off at the 15-minute mark for the first and second quarters. Part of their premeditated rotations again off the ground tonight. Power by five points. Kingsley had it and lost it. Payne Corns was good at ground level. So was Wilson. Chance for Cassisi caught up in the tackle. Take two and Edwards dumps him. Free kick Cassisi. Let's take a look, Chris. No doubt the free kick was there. No need to throw him to the ground afterwards. And they maintain possession through Kingsley. Right on centre wing. Might have been worth it for the Crows with the aggression. Absolutely. Making a statement. Treadray. Gee, that look out the <laughs> ball. Umpire's right on the line. Said, play on. You're fine, Warren. You can do no wrong. Crows have the numbers. Staying down, Surgeon. Caught by the legs. Port fans appealing for the free not to be. Massey. To Bassett. Henschel just banging it long. Clark's going to come from behind. Oh, oh, look at that mark from Chad Corns. Back to Wanganeen. Spreading it wide to Schofield. Can kick up through the middle. Poulton. Peter Bergwijn again. Can he find the target? Yes, he can. Surgeon. Lively on the half forward line for Port at the moment. I tell you what, this kid who was picked up late in the draft, but he can certainly play, no doubt about that. A real lively mover. Got some great speed, built beautifully. Let's see if he can kick. Just his fifth AFL game as we watch Peter Bergwijn just find him. Even slipped and still got in front of Burton. He's kicked two goals, one in those four games so far. 
former South Fremantle player. Important kick to tell. Oh, look at that. Uh, well, for a guy that's in his fifth game of footy, he's got some smarts too. No doubt. Great presence of mind. Jared Poulton just drifts down. Very poor checking from the Adelaide Footy Club. Again, they have been poor in that department over the last couple of weeks. Not a bad bloke to give the ball to. You've he's seen him kick some important goals, of course, for Port. Yeah, around Siren time. Yep. He pops up. He was good last week with an important goal against Collingwood when they needed him. So Jared Poulton, again, like Stuart Jew, started on the bench, but can often have an impact. Inside 50, not bad. Just pulled it left. Just to behind. One straight kick in it. Not long to go in this first quarter. Showdown 15. And Port by one straight kick. 32 plays, 26. Begley goes short for the Crows. Come away through Doughty. Goes wide, Matna. He's on the half-back flank. The Stengline. So he pinpointed it well. Stengline has had a lot of the ball. That's number nine. Back to Doughty. So a big transfer of play. Some run out of defence. Begley, who brought the ball back into play. To the half forward lines of Siren Sounds. A very entertaining and tough opening quarter here at Football Park, Amy Stadium. And Adelaide, 4 2 26. They trail by six points. Port, 5 2 32. Yes, yeah, just the start we're expecting for a showdown. Great intensity, great skills, some good finishing in front of goal. Gary Ayres would be pretty pleased, even though he's only down by one goal. His side is right in this match. Mark Williams knows what it's like to win showdowns. Warren Treadray, the man up forward, the danger man for Port Adelaide with three goals. How many will he get tonight? Who knows? He's the premier forward in the competition. And a man to stop if Adelaide want to win this game. Tuesday. Six red-blooded guys are about to compete for one red-hot woman. What they don't know is that she... Is a he. The controversial love quest. Only ten has the balls to show. Miriam premieres 8.30 Tuesday. Toyota's biggest event of the year is here, and Toyota means business with factory bonuses on Avalon GXI from 30990 right now. Really? These blokes really do mean business. trading card game. Now, now. In imperfections, take action. New Gunya Pure SOS anti-spot pen. Aim and fire. Imperfections are dried out, skin purified. New Gunya Pure SOS anti-spot pen. Your new secret weapon. Pay nothing on now at Lacornu. You heard it. No deposit, interest free and pay absolutely nothing till August 2005. You heard it. Zero. Zilch. Nix. Nothing to pay till August 2005. Look on you. Herman and Sherman Smith lost 45 kilos each with the help of Subway low-fat sandwiches and exercise. Hey, I'm Sherman, and this is my brother Herman. I was 300 pounds, and I was 290. Them boys was huge. Well, I used to have to guard my cake around. For seven months, we ate nothing but Subway. Seven tasty sandwiches under six grams of fat like the turkey breast with honey mustard sauce on fresh baked bread. Before they lost all that weight, I couldn't tell them apart. Now that they done lost the weight, I still can't tell them apart. Everybody thinks we look better. They look good now. Not good, but they look good now. Subway eating fresh. For more choice and the lowest prices, Bunnings Warehouse is right up your street. Little Buddy's Roses, a bargain at $2.99. 150 watt halogen work light, $8.96. Huge King Rug, a low $59.95. Brazier, great value at $29.95. Poly Tarp, just $1.99. And we have how-to workshops every weekend. We won't be beaten on price. And that's a promise. Bunnings Warehouse. Lowest prices are just the beginning. Discover Michelin's passion for innovation. We've created tyres that last longer and tested them for ultimate comfort. Discover comfort mile after mile with the energy range from Michelin. Michelin. 
discover a new driving experience. Rosemith Vampire Slayers. Played with the viewers. Pajama Party! 9.30 Tuesday, Rose meets music royalty Brent. High Flyer John Travolta and the John Butler Trio perform on Rove Live, 9.30 Tuesday. Channel 10 Adelaide appreciates the support of local sponsors of this AFL coverage. Stratco, for all your hardware and home improvement needs. Trust RAA Insurance to look after your possessions. Trust Got Hi-Fi, best advice, low price. And Booze Brothers, proudly South Australian owned. to Amy Stadium. Showdown 15, quarter time. Port Adelaide leading by the one goal. Treadray we saw has kicked three. The leading marking player in the competition hasn't taken a mark and he's kicked three. Burgoyne's been everywhere with 12 disposals. Stenglein's been on him, has taken nine, but I think that's a win for Port Adelaide at the moment. And Kerry McGregor with singles for Adelaide. And Gary has had plenty to say at quarter time. And also uh, their assistant coach, Neil Craig, having plenty to say to Marty Matner and Brett Burton. Another game being played tonight is at the Telstra Dome between the Kangaroos and the Brisbane Lions. Replays are coming this game. Going to show you the score now. If you don't want to know the score, you can look away now. Wonderful opening quarter. Mark Williams also with plenty to say at quarter time. They got off to a good start, Adelaide. They kicked the first goal. McGregor and Edwards were a surprise. What have Port Adelaide done to change it? Let's find out from their assistant coach, Dean Bailey. He's with Tiffany Cherry. Well, Dean, you're pretty, pretty fired up, Mark Williams. Are you happy with the first quarter? Oh, look, uh, you, know, you know, the showdowns are pretty competitive. The start of the game, they got some centre ball uh, breaks on us, kicked a couple of goals and stoppages, but we fought our way back into it. So, no, it's what we expect, close game. Dominic Cassisi has been great for you so far this year. Another good job on Marcus Sheet. Yeah, no, Dom's been good. I think his goal that he kicks there shows that he's, uh, you know, really improved from last year. Year, so we expect more than this quarter. And one of the keys was the midfield on the delivery to Warren Threadway. Pretty happy with Peter Bergwijn, no doubt. Yeah, no, uh, the boys in the middle are working pretty hard and we've got a big target up forward to kick to as long as we go to Treaders, we're, we're still a chance to win the game. Thanks for talking to us, Dean. Pretty composed in the Port Adelaide camp. They know what it's like to win these games. Chris, a lot of uncontested possessions at Port Adelaide, a lot of handballs, they're prepared to run them. Yeah, overused the ball a bit too and certainly turned it over, made more mistakes than Adelaide. Adelaide capitalising uh, on some turnovers from Port Adelaide, but a pretty good even duel, uh, the shootout we didn't expect. Second quarter underway and Matty Clark winning it down to Stengline once again and he's wrapped up by his opponent and he's holding the ball. Gee. One arm was free, you must make an effort. One arm. I'd like to see that again. Here we go. KB, what did you think? That's tough. That pretty was tough. pretty tough. Brendan Lade now, inside 50, Port Adelaide. Good punch from Henschel. Surgeon, good tackle by Doughty. Salafet picked it up, tried to get through Burton. They'll have a ball up. One goal margin at quarter time. Hopeful for another close game as they often are. The last five within three goals. Brett Burton's been caught high and he gets a free kick. Port Adelaide crowd not happy. Across the shoulder there from Dominic Cassisi. Umpire in the perfect position to spot that. Switches play to Perry. It's opened up here pretty well for Adelaide. Henshaw. Maybe a bit too far for John Cock because Gavin Wangerman's right with him. Not the player you want to have on your hammer. John Cock tries to barrel out of the tackle, it won't be. Another good start to this second quarter. Let's hear from Mark Aston down in the boundary. Yeah, a couple of interesting things happened at quarter time. Chris Massey was spoken to at great length by Neil Craig, Gary Ayers and Peter Curran, the three coaches. And uh, Brett Burton was spoken to at, uh, at length as well by Gary and Neil Craig. Brett, of course, running loose in defence. Nathan Bassett is a diabetic. He receives some uh, attention. Sturgeon trying to paddle the ball along in front. Thanks for that, Mark. Pulled off the ball, said Ray. Just did it well, didn't he? Just did it so well. Such a good head. Didn't pick the ball up. Trent Henschel. 
Only a young player makes a kid's mistake. Pedro milks the free kick and a chance to kick his four. Well, he kicked three straight in that first quarter. Lauren Treadray. Six disposals. All kicks. Peter Burgoyne with 13 possessions. Leads the charge for Port Power. Oh, what a oh. kick. Right to the line. Is the distance there? Let's wait for it. Treadray has got four. If you're tired of watching your favourite game on a small screen, then think big and think Truscott Hi-Fi. For a big range of big screen TVs, widescreen TVs and plasma panels, look in Truscott Hi-Fi. Big brands, low price and best advice. LG 111 centimetre widescreen, only $24.95. And magnificent Philips plasma panel, only $4.99. Truscott Hi-Fi. Adelaide's lowest prices with up to 24 months interest-free terms. Be fair to say, Gary, ears his headache with Warren Treadray just continues. Well, already that's his best performance in a showdown. And Gavin Wanganeen's record of six goals, two, looks in doubt. Laid. Taken by Clark. Here's McLeod on the break. Straight down towards Edwards. Corns came in. Edwards forced to spoil. Chance for John Cox. He's been quiet. He gave the give off. He's been okay. free-kicked afterwards. It'll come back to Graham John Cox. He roved that very well too, Chris. Look, he certainly did. And was made to earn it. He's been out of sorts a little bit over the last couple of weeks, Graham John Cox. Always does the hard stuff. Just hasn't resulted in goals for him. Hasn't had a lot of the footy tonight. But again, an important kick for goal. Port get the first one. Ooh. Bang. And well, they say you've got to make him earn them, but uh, that might come at a price for Michael Wilson. Certainly, umpire would have been uh, very close to thinking about putting his name in the book there. Got to settle, though, now. He's only a kid, but he's got to compose himself, make sure he kicks the goal, make it hurt. Uh, he does play with a lot of confidence that belies his age. Graham Johncock, still only 21. Wonderful player. Needs to just yeah. bend it and does. And the answering goal, the Crows. And doesn't he let Wilson know? So this is the new motor. Yeah, Toyota Avalon V6. All I like quite can. Gee, she's posh inside. Big. This really is travelling first class. And I only paid economy. <laughs> Toyota's biggest event of the year is here, and Avalon GXI with factory bonuses is just $30,990 right now. These blokes really do mean business. And Darren Goldsman shows experience there. Been yes. around a long time. Well, he said to him, he asked him the question, would you be happy to say that when you go up? Yep. Obviously talking about the tribunal. Chance for Matna went in hard. James always burrows in for the ball. Easy. 6-2-38 Port Adelaide. The Crows, 5-2-32. Clark, that long reach. Here's Burgoyne. What a game he's played. Record-breaking game tonight. Great, he's been tackle. Great tackle by Matna. And you said before the game, Chris, that you really like the way he plays. Well, that's his bread and butter. He loves tackling, making a contest. He'll do that all the time. Goes hard at the body. So it's 50 metres as well. Oh, yes. And just knocked the ball away. So Matna, who's only kicked one goal in his career, hasn't kicked a goal this year. What sort of kick is he, Chris? He's got a good leg. Like, the distance will be no worries at all. A beautiful kick on the run and normally pretty accurate. This to tie up the score. Showdown 15. Matna from right on 50. Leans back. Oh. It's got to go right to the line. Pack of players. Thumped through by Brogan. It's always been a great part of his game. Even when he was just first or second game, wasn't it, with Matna? Always showed that ability to lay a good solid tackle. It's absolutely. Just loves making a contest. Got the defensive side of his game well and truly under control. Just needs to add some offense to it. Getting his opportunity tonight. Margin five points. Game is delivering everything that we expected at the moment. Cassisi to the run of Schofield. To the mark of Henschel. 
terrific performance by the youngster. Kerry will get onto his left and go laterally to Burton, who's in space. The Birdman can fly free here. Short pass, still some space. McGregor from 50 unloads and puts the cruise back in front. Stratco are passing on the savings in our neighbourhood fun catalogue. Tabletop patio heater, just $179. Marley drainaway channel and grate, only $19.95. Three module Stratco rainwater tanks, a low $325. Corona kerosene heaters, great value at $229. And Houston energy saving lamps, only $5.95. Bargains for the whole neighbourhood at Stratco. What you need today. <clears throat> McGregor, now if he can outpoint Chad Corn. At centre half forward, it's going to be a big bonus. Well, Corns can't give him yards. I mean, you can't give any player 40 metres. Just poor defence from Chad Corns on that occasion. Well, Corns has had a starring season. He's had two goals kicked on him so far. That's 10 goals for the season. Now by McGregor, and there's another great tackle. And that's the barometer for the Crows. If they're tackling, they're on song. 20 tackles to 10 at the moment they've laid. Certainly got that part of their game back in action. Stem line man right in the middle of that action here's Clark over the top what a leap he's got down to Wakeland out muscled that time here's again Stengline just burrows his way through flex the muscles blew up the biceps he's having a crack he's had the most possessions for the Crows nine Perry and again second man up is Clark tackle Matner Scott again and Matna. There's a chance, Perry tumbles the ball forward, and John Pop. It was a slips catch. He's directly in front, and he is just 20 metres out. And all of a sudden, the Crows have got a bit of run. Well, and it all starts from the tackling, I reckon. Martin Matner then, once again, a fantastic tackle. Third over, Ian Perry. The kick wasn't pretty, but Graham Chonkok on the chest. The smart from John Cock, he knocked the Blanganine off his feet and then just drifted off. So John Cock, from just 25 metres out, straight through the centre. Two goals for John Cock. Sunday years, motion picture television, Break! you haven't seen before. 9.30 Sunday on 10. The new groundbreaking US series watched by over 14 million viewers. Anything like CSI? Only if you're dyslexic. Mark Harmon leads a team of special agents who solve world crimes. And their first case couldn't be any bigger. The president's life may be at risk. Sunday years, the premiere of NCIS. After criminal intent, Sunday. Three goals in this term for Adelaide. All of a sudden, they lead by seven points. A very relaxed and calm Mark Williams. Brogan beaten to it by Clark. Jericho, dare I say, he came tumbling down, KV. Yes, well done. <laughs> the Battle of Jericho. Let's move on. As we see, plenty of players getting the ball. As far as Burton, out in front of John Cock, went without it. Wangadine very rarely does. James, clever kick, wonderful kick from Roger James. Thurston's had some time back to Cassisi. Centre half forward, Stewie Jew. Great work. Down he left his man to help out. McLeod on the burst. Out in front, McGregor or Jericho, the target. Here's McGregor. Bit of volleyball work. No throw, Jericho, long ball, Welsh in the goal square with Bishop. Good defence by Bishop, solid on the last line, a rush behind. That's what you want to see from McLeod, a little bit of arrogance, running away, bouncing the ball. Did the with crowd, Korn, crowd him. loved it too, haven't seen that for a long time from Andrew McLeod, showed some great turn of pace, vintage Andrew McLeod this time to go. Maybe some confidence starting to return. Crows by 8 oh. 46 pace, 38. Here's McGregor. Takes an easy mark. Now he's a big kick. His confidence is high. He's got two goals. Just out of his range, you would think. 
going to have to kick from 55. See, his adrenaline must be pumping now, a couple extra metres. Clark is getting right back in the square, along with Perry. McGregor's likes his chances, unloads. It's a big, big kick. The distance was there, not the accuracy. And through for a behind. It's a headache port. Kenny McGregor, five marks now, just breaking free of Chad Gould, who had plenty of footy in the first quarter, haven't been sided uh, in the second. He has to tighten up as Port Adelaide do all over the ground. The Crows with momentum as we speak. It's pretty rare we see Chad Corn lower his colours for McGregor. He's doing a good job. It's an interesting setup they've got with two smalls playing out at full forward. Carey and Welsh and McGregor playing further up the ground. So Bishop is in the back pocket. Hugs the boundary line. Here comes a bird now! Couldn't take it. Wow, what an effort. You could see him coming. Have a look at this for a leap. Oh, he's got his judgment out over the last couple of weeks. He's got to get the radar right. Clark's been terrific in the ruck. Now he's coming back, he's getting the free kick. Handball to Stewart. His ability to outjump everyone in the league is just quite extraordinary by Clark. Again, was the dominant ruckman last week. Crows couldn't take advantage of his clean hand, but doing much better tonight. Looking for Carey. The King's got it. Well, he might be dethroned at the moment by Warren Treadway at the other end of the ground, who's been at four goals. Carey's kicked one. He just might fancy a shootout and try and keep his crown intact tonight. And why not? Hasn't been in all that bad a form. It hasn't been great, but he's been assassinated in the media. But he's been pretty important to the Crows lineup. And, uh, well, good players kick these goals. Well, I've seen him tonight. He's been very, very lively. And the key is back at Amy Stadium. Kerry's got two. And the Crows are charging. Boos Brothers. Celebrate this Mother's Day with Bailey's. Buy two for just $50. Or this Trilogy Cube Brook, $10.99 each and a bonus Magnum with a dozen. Colton Cold Stubbies, only $29.99 a carton. And save on Hardy's Red Six Pack, $75.99, including a bonus Stonehaven Limestone Coast Shiraz and Booze Brothers Calico Wine Bag. Save over $33. John Cox, all with two. The problem for Port at the other end, Chris, only two goal scorers. Treadway's got four of their five. Oh, I get a bad bounce for Schofield. Rusciuto saw Singlon, couldn't quite get him. Sean Burgoyne in the pack now. We'll have another ball up. The boy, nothing out of the midfield for Port Adelaide in this second quarter. Burgoyne, 12 touches in the first, only one in the second. We said Stingline had to tighten up. He's certainly done that. Port Adelaide midfield shut down. The Crows just working their way on top in that area. Port got it out to a 10-point margin, but it's all Adelaide since. Stewie Jew. Long ball, Massey in best spot for Adelaide. Refuses to slow it up. Oh. Here's an error from Bassett. Treadway does enough. Surgeon stepping. Short pass. Too far. Still a chance, though. Ebert came out. Couldn't take it. Magna the give to Stengline to Henschel, and the Crows defence is solid, Burton again on the wing, with some time, long ball, McGregor, what a corner he's playing, mark number six, the leads are coming thick and fast, carry the target deep, Clark there, Welsh, Crumming, Bishop, searching handball forward, it's not out of danger yet, tackle again, John Cox with their cane corns also. Adelaide have held it in their 450. And got a sniff, Adelaide, you can just see it. They've picked up all over the ground. They're tackling their work rate. We just haven't seen it over the last couple of weeks. But in full flight tonight. Clark usually wins these knockouts. Thurston's to Wanganeen. Cochran's just come on the ground for Stewie Jew. This will be his first disposal for the evening. Peter Berg on the target. Good spoil from Stengline. And just maybe getting on top there. No and doubt at all. To. No doubt at all. And he did have to, as we said, Bergwijn with 12 in the first quarter, only one in the second. Stengwijn, a tough night ahead, but playing very well in the second quarter. Just under 10 minutes remaining. Plenty of players around the ball. Here's Peter Bergwijn. Stengwijn couldn't get him that time. Kingsley gets away from the King. 
Bad kick though, Massey liked his game so far. Matna. With some time and space and needs it. Poor kick. Set up McGregor. Courageous mark by Wakeman going back. He quickly gives off to Peter Burgoyne. Nothing much on offer for him though. Forced to go short to Dean Brogan. Just can't get any run, Port Adelaide. No run at all. Very stagnant. It's very stagnant, isn't it? I mean, we've got Wade and Treadway just saying, kick it up in the air. So he's forced to go on the switch to Wilson. So he has pressure. to be spot on, though. And he isn't. Turnover time. Edwards. Players in the middle free. Oh. He's missed the cloud. The way goes Wakeland. Finds Corns. Comes away from center half back. Drops it in short. Finds Cassisi. This is the best I've seen Adelaide play this year, Chris. All of a sudden, they've got some intensity, some urgency in their game. But Port's a great side. Here comes Corns. Center wing, inside 50. Big pack of players. Treadway is always going to be the target. Here's Perry. Caught in the tackle by Lade. Thanks, Chris. Quickly. Getting some numbers back in defense too, Adelaide. Just no options up forward for Port Adelaide. Very stagnant through the midfield. Clark has been dominant in the ruck. Edwards, so lively. Great turn of pace. Somehow got the ball out. Matt in a toe poked it. Burton needs clean hands. Touch of the fumbles. Cochran over the ball with strength. Can't get away. And there's a ball up on 50. The tackling has been fierce. It's tough in the clinches. Showdown 15. Port Adelaide have won the last seven showdowns. They lead 10 to 4 in these big games here. And Edwards hangs the ball back to the centre wing. John Cock has kicked a couple of goals. He's quick. Great shift. He's Perry. super quick. Perry did well. Inside 50. McLeod in game 200. The magic is back. Sets it up. What a kick. What a kick. And Messi is going to kick a goal. The champ Andrew McLeod in game 200 is running his stuff at Amy Stadium. Certainly isn't so. It's Chris Massey, as we said, gives great rebound from the Adelaide Footy Club off that halfback flank, been in great form over the last couple of weeks. Graham Johncock certainly having an influence in this game in the second quarter. Gavin Wangani with a job on him. That's the sight the Crows fans would love to see. McLeod with the ball, hitting a target. Massey with courage, finishes off. For the 11th time this quarter, the Crows go inside 50. Port Adelaide only four times. And that results with the Crows leading by 21 points. They lead by 21 after trailing by six. What a quarter by Adelaide. Plenty for their fans to be very happy about it. They go forward once again. It was Hudson who cleared it. And so the youngsters are getting involved as Jericho. Touch. Play on four by the umpire. McLeod left it for John Cox. Who has kicked a miraculous goal. Where did he come from? Three goals to John Cox. All in this quarter. Adelaide yep. are just killing them. What was about that, Chris, was he just picked the ball up with one grab. Sometimes you find too many players want to paddle the ball along. Have a look at John Cock here. This is fantastic, I reckon. And Port Adelaide have been too grabbing tonight. Been very uh, fumbly with their ball at ground level. Gavin Wanganin makes a token effort. Look at that. It takes courage, that one, but Gavin Wanganin, only the token effort. Graham John Cock with the loose ball, pounces with pace, bang, goal. But he just picked it up, you know, so many players want to just tickle that ball along, try and get the ball bounce up end on end. But not John Cock then. He's killing in this second quarter. He's booted three goals. And all of a sudden, the Crows, after trailing by six oh, points at quarter go, time, go, 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 go. lead now by 27 points. There's a chance ebert has got it. He's a pretty good kick. Certainly is KB, and what he is is a very good catch overhead as well. I haven't seen a lot of him tonight. Spent a bit of time on the interchange bench, but very important kick this for Port Adelaide. Crows with all the momentum, totally dominating this second quarter. Two goals behind early in this first quarter. Now four in front. Fred Ebert gets a chance to peg one back. From 48 metres. 
pushing it left. Can't bend it back. Bit of uh, movement down on the interchange bench as well because Kane Corns has come off the ground. Colt is on. So the number one tagger is taking a breather. Here's Thurston. Good play by Henschel. Burton. Having a terrific season around the corner. Chipping in and taking is Wilson. He's on the centre wing. Sizes up. Finds Thurston. Young man from Crib Point in Victoria. Inside the centre square. To the pocket. Birdman getting back. That took courage. Free kick. Free kick. The free kick. He ran with the flight of the ball. He was no. very courageous. I'm just not sure. Let's listen in. It may be against the, the other Crows defender. No, yeah, no big shot there from Darren Goss. It may have been a push. I think it's uh, Burton who has just yep. had his eyes on the ball. He's taken his front on. So here's a chance. Ebert, take two. He's kicked seven goals for the season in just six games. Ebert from point blank range. Gee, this is close. He may have missed this. He missed it. He's got it. Squeezed it in. Just. Let's go down the tip. Rangadine has just been pitched onto the plan. He actually hurt himself when John Cop picked that last ball. He hurt his right leg because he's just gone into the goal score. Ebert gets his first and breaks a run of six goals for the Adelaide Crows. And 21 minutes between goals for. Port Adelaide, which is very rare for such a, a dominant forward unit. It certainly is, and again, Peter Berglund just starting to get a couple of touches, went nearly touchless for the first half of the second quarter, just had three or four late, Port Adelaide with a couple of forward entries after the Crows completely dominant, Kenny McGregor in the forward lines, just dominating Tad Corns, Tad Corns, eight touches in the first quarter, only one in the second. Port crowd trying to get their team back into it, they've got it back to a 20-point margin. Stenglein in traffic, somehow to Rusciuto. Wobbles it forward, Crows playing in front, Welsh in front of Bishop, and Bishop has terrific pace as we know. Boundary throw in, just inside the forward 50 for Adelaide, who have been sensational in this second quarter. Clark will come over the back, flips it out towards Perry, Good tackle by Lade. In the way was Wilson. Does well. Balance and poise. Runs it out of his defensive 50. Long kick. Here's Peter Burgoyne. Massey. Henshaw. Bit of volleyball from Begley. Good tackling by Port Adelaide. Ebert's in there. Good umpiring. Let it go for a while. Let the players sort it out. A couple of good young players in Henshaw and Jericho. Adelaide, they're just start, starting to develop, Chris. Trent Henschel improving week in, week out. Now that he's been shifted down back, Luke Jericho just runs around the forward line. Plenty of spirit, plenty of energy, and does the unpredictable. Just his 10th game, Henschel. Looked like a born defender. Who said he could play forward? Rusciuto bangs it forward. Crows have done it too in this second quarter without anybody having a major influence apart from their forward line. Very even contribution all over the ground everybody contributing something they haven't had happening for the last month laid in the ruck now coming through thurston's it's just kingsley wrapping up stenglein six goals to two in this quarter to the crows graham johncock has kicked three of them nathan bock waiting big punch from thurston's burton I don't know what they said at quarter time, but it worked. McLeod. Ball goes back. Chance for Kingsley. Rusciuto. Carey is there. Good work from Chad Corns. Too strong. Takes a good mark. Goes wide. Player breaks for him. Cochran now. Again, it's pretty static for Port Adelaide. Adelaide putting the squeeze on. 
He's kicked two goals. It's the best care he's been, I reckon, for a season and a half tonight. No doubt at all. The coaching staff straight on the ground, getting the boys straight over the room as quick as they can. Warren Treadray on screen, fantastic in the first quarter against Ian Perry with three goals. A lot quieter in the second with only one against Nathan Bassett. Gary Ayres made the big moves and the moves he's made tonight have all paid off. His team with momentum, tackling hard, chasing hard, doing the things they haven't done for the last month of footy and giving them a real chance to win this game. Well, no wonder Gary Ayres has pumped up. Seven goals, four in that quarter, equaling their best second quarter in a showdown. Go back to round 22-2000 for the identical score. Treadray's got plenty to say, plenty more footy to come. Adelaide lead by 27 points. Showdown 15. At the special time, 6 o'clock Sunday, the countdown is on as the final five take to the stage. Each singer is phenomenal, but only four can move on. So who will go home this week? Find out on American Idol, 6 o'clock Sunday. Celebrate this Mother's Day with Bailey's. Buy two for just $50. Or this Trilogy Cube Brook, $10.99 each and a bonus Magnum with a dozen. Colton Cold Stubbies, only $29.99 a carton. And save on Hardy's Red Six Pack, $75.99, including a bonus Stonehaven Limestone Coast Shiraz and Booze Brothers Calico Wine Bag. Save over $33. KFC's Mum's Treat with mouth-watering chicken, golden crispy strips, everyone's favourite sides, Pepsi and a delicious Sara Lee chocolate Bavarian. Thanks, Mum. Courts are discounted, heavily discounted. They paid 200 bucks or even 150 for a world-class winner weight wall quilt. We've got 500 gram wall quilts, half price. Queens on 160, 79.95. Kings on 180, 89.95. This weekend, you'll never get a better time to buy a quilt. 600 only wall quilts are mind-blowing, half price. And it's not just quilts on sale. 200 only famous polar fleece blankets are stupid, 59.95. And flannel sheet sets way cheap, 39.95. Of all the cars in Australia, only one can be Wheels Car of the Year. The rotary-powered four-door Mazda RX-8. Mazda RX-8, a sports car like no other. Steve. And now, Wheels Car of the Year. Get into Direct Rug Outlet's massive Gotta Go clearance sale. 100% wool rugs from $9. Mudman Traditional from $9. Shaggy Rugs, $99. Timber Laminate, just $18 a square metre. All must go. Sir Donald Bradman Drive, Hilton, Main North Road, Parafield Airport. Wouldn't it be nice if the world was cat-free? Shock the groves and trees and birds and Monday, a special presentation of the never-before-seen pilot episode. Hey, Lawson. What have I done now? From fugly frat boy to funky big boy. No pain, no gain. Oh, all new Queer Eye, 8.30 Monday. time here at Amy Stadium, showdown 15, and Graham Johncock having plenty to say to Michael Wilson, and plenty to say on the scoreboard in that second quarter as well. What have I led by six points at quarter time, but a magnificent second quarter sees Adelaide now lead by 27. 
Treadray doing it up front for Port Adelaide with four. Brogan and Cassisi help, helping him out. And John Cock for Kerry McGregor, two each. Leading possession winners, Burgoyne, 16. Rusciuto coming to the game late in that second quarter. Stengline's done some pretty good work off the ball as well. And Chris McDermott, the, well, we said that they might have to hold him to 12 goals, Adelaide. They've got six at halftime, Port. We didn't expect Adelaide to have 11 at halftime. No, we certainly didn't. Hadn't they had some options up in the forward line? Graham Choncock, the second quarter, was just outstanding. Wayne Carey, Kenny McGregor as well. Uh, Port started well. Burgoyne and Treadray, they were a handful. Well, you, you said at the start of the game, the Perry on Treadray's not going to work. And it didn't. No, it didn't. And he's just too strong. Ian Perry doesn't have natural defensive tendencies. And uh, Treadray was too good too early. But Gary is, to his credit, made the switch quickly. And Nathan Bassett's been very good since. Dean Brogan with a fantastic grab there and just going back and finishing off there. It really did look uh, like a good start from Adelaide's point of view with their forward line, didn't they? Where they tried Edwards up forward and McGregor was further out from the plane. We see Kerry can go there. A different setup that's paying dividends. It certainly is. Kenny McGregor there. Value for touches. Graham Johncock the same. What they've got is dangerous people inside 50. Edwards, McLeod, Johncock, Carey. All can kick goals. Scotty Welsh. So they're dangerous. And you can't afford to give them latitude. Chad Corn's far too loose on Kenny McGregor in the second quarter. And if you give somebody 40 metres, they are going to do that every day. Yes, Brett Burton found some space on the wing in that second quarter as well to get that to McGregor, who's just been outstanding with seven marks in the first half. John Cock was ever as we saw. In that instance, he just peeled off the back of the pack after knocking Wanganeen down. And you mentioned during the call that uh, he's been a little bit quiet. He certainly has answered some critics today. Oh, has he what? And uh, he's got a very smart head too. And again, good value for money. He knows where to find the spaces. Just can peel off. You know, they call it cheating, but it's smart if you're a half-forward flanker and he gets the results on the board, which is important. Yes, and now with 15 goals for the season so far for the Adelaide Crows. Let's take a look at the match stats to half-time, and Port Adelaide have had more disposal, which is probably normal. Had a heap of the footy, but have been so wasteful with it. Been uh, very poor with their ball skills, their hands, they've fumbled the ball a lot. The Crows, much better value for money. Interesting to see the marks the same. You know, the Crows in that second quarter used the ball so well, and that's let them down, and pretty good from the clearances as well. Inside 50s, 27 to 20, favouring Adelaide, and it's just been their marks inside 50, which has been good as well. Yeah, just too loose, Port Adelaide. Warren Treadray went off just before uh, or the end of half time there to his players, knowing that they weren't disciplined mm. enough. Adelaide have been tough. They needed to be tough tonight, and they certainly have been for the first half. Can they be for the whole game is the question. Yes, Warren Treadray had plenty to say just before they uh, went to the half time break. He had a good chat to the team, and wonder how they're feeling now. They're uh, in there, taking in, digesting what Warren Treadray had to say. We'll take a break here from Amy Stadium on Showdown 15 and be back shortly. You know Big Brother's secret, but did you know that housemates have secrets of their own? 7.30 Sunday, before you begin to vote, you need to know everything about them. What deep dark secrets will they disclose? A special Big Brother, 7.30 Sunday. Then 7.30 Monday, they're there, their dirty laundry. Now they have to nominate each other. Will there revelations of their nominations? Who will be the first up for eviction? Two huge nights of Big Brother from 7.30 Sunday. Big Pond introduces an enormous fall in broadband prices from $29.95 a month once installed on a 12-month contract. That's broadband at around dial-up internet prices. Call 1-800-008-876 now. I'll tell you a secret. The gods envy us. Because we're mortal. Because any moment might be our last. Get into Direct Rug Outlet's massive Gotta Go clearance sale. 100% wool rugs from $9. Modern and traditional from $9. Shaggy rugs, $99. Timber laminate, just $18 a square metre. All must go. Sir Donald Bradman Drive, Hilton, Main North Road, Parafield Airport. Mummy's voice. Time to go outside. Come on, get out from under there. Oh, it's a naughty boy. No, don't go in there. Come on, out you go. Good boy. Hey, how you doing? Here, try one of those. Thanks. Oh! 
Starburst squirts. The liquid centers make them dangerously juicy. Ah, uh, here's another story from the world's greatest show. Cause it's from another place that will sing you all to know. There ain't no one scene that's bigger than the game. But when we're about to have more, we all stand to play. We have to put war. Play the game. Team 2004 trading card game. Out now. Radio Regis is making a big splash. You can buy now and pay no interest until 2007. Buy a new TV, plasma or LCD TV and pay no interest until 2007. Splash out on a new computer and pay no interest until 2007. And get a dishwasher with a bonus dinner set or a new fridge and pay no interest until 2007. Dive into SA's biggest electrical retailer and pay no interest until 2007. Now that's big! Big Pond Broadband prices have dived, starting from $29.95 a month once installed on a 12-month contract. That's broadband at around dial-up internet prices. Call 1-800-131-040 now. Beautiful night here in Adelaide for Showdown 15, and they're seeing a terrific contest. They get used to them seeing them between these two sides and it hasn't been a disappointing first half and we're looking forward to the second half and Peter Bergwin's a player that we've watched pretty closely in this first half, Chris. 16 disposals, 12 of those in the first quarter. You've been surprised at the way this contest between Stenglein and him has gone? I was surprised early Tyson Stenglein giving him so much latitude. Stenglein had nine himself in the first quarter but his job was to cut Bergwin out and in the second quarter he stood up and did that and the result for Adelaide got on the board but Bergwin was brilliant early. Maybe burned a few disposals which is not normally like him not hitting his targets, but gee, they shut him down in the second quarter. Martin Matt then, I mean, that's his bread and butter. He loves tackling more than anything. And uh, Tyson Stingwine certainly did a good job of him in that second quarter. Ken McGregor for the Adelaide Crows, just been brilliant at centre-half forward. Uh, again, surprising given the quality of his opponent in Chad Corns. Yeah, but Chad Corns gave him 40 or 50 metres on two or three occasions. You're going to give a bloke that much space, especially of the, the calibre of Kenny McGregor. He is going to hurt you. He's a very smart footballer, and I think people underestimate him because he probably doesn't look like one. He doesn't look like he's going to destroy you, but he's taken eight marks, presents, his, his endurance is incredible, and he makes every touch count, which is is great for forward. Yeah, he doesn't mind finishing off either. Five goals against Richmond, and that's a beautiful finish from a centre-half four. That's what you want from 50 metres to be able to finish off with that sort of talent. Well, another game being played is at the Telstra Dome between the Kangaroos and the Lions. Time once again to check out that score. If you don't want to know the score, if you want to watch the replay, you can look away now. Second half, not too far away in this showdown. Chris, I want to ask you one more question before we get back to that. Port Adelaide have been behind at halftime many times in a showdown against Adelaide. Have managed to come back and win. Certainly have. They've hard, they're hard and tough, and they go the journey. Adelaide hasn't been able to go the journey. Certainly the last seven showdowns. Pressure on tonight. So much at stake for the Adelaide Football Club. They have to tough it out for four quarters. If they do that, they can certainly win this sh uh, showdown for sure. Crows lead by 27 points. Is it enough? We'll find out very soon with a second half from Amy Stadium. Uncle Mick, mm -hmm. is 19990 a good price for a Toyota Corolla? Well, love, it all depends on how many Ks it's done and what year. Oh, it's brand new. Brand new? A Toyota Corolla? Manual from 19990 with air. How do they do it for the dough? It's Toyota's biggest event of the year with top-selling Corolla Ascent. Still just 19990 That's class-leading value. These blokes really do mean business. Thought Big Pond couldn't get any more amazing? Check out this little baby. Starting from $29.95 a month, once installed on a 12-month contract. That's broadband at around dial-up internet prices. Call 1-800-131-036 now. Feel the second sale is on again this Saturday only at Jeff's Cross and Marion. Shed loads of seconds, crazy prices, so be quick. Colonial and D-cut gutters are scratch here and there from just 275 a linear metre. Perlins and offcuts, seconds from 180 a linear metre. At Fielders, we've got enough seconds quality decking to do any area. Prices start at 360 a linear metre. Fielders seconds only sale. This Saturday only while stocks last. At Fielders, Jeps Cross and Marion. 
Discount City Carpet Stock Clearance Sale guarantees Adelaide's lowest prices on its massive range of carpets, timber flooring, rugs and vinyls. No matter what price you get elsewhere, Discount City Carpets will beat it guaranteed. Discount City Carpets Superstores and Super Warehouse. Stock clearance on now. Skin imperfections? Take action! New Garnier Pure SOS Anti-Spot Pen. Aim and fire. Imperfections are dried out, skin purified. New Garnier Pure SOS Anti-Spot Pen. Your new secret weapon. For more choice and the lowest prices, Bunnings Warehouse is right up your street. Chrysanthemums, great value at $3.99 each. Four litre directions in white, just $49.98. Ryobi Cordless Stool, Back and Torch Kit, $59. Clothes Era, a bargain at $4.95. Snail and Slug Pellets, $1.45. And everyone loves our handy gift cards. We won't be beaten on price. And that's a promise. Bunnings Warehouse! Lowest prices are just the beginning. It out corners a conventional tire. It out breaks a conventional tire. It out handles a conventional tire. Because with its revolutionary silica compound, the Dunlop SP Sport 300E is anything but conventional. What are your tires made of? Big Pond introduces an enormous fall in broadband prices from $29.95 a month once installed on a 12-month contract. That's broadband at around dial-up internet prices. Call 1-800-008-876 now. Channel 10 Adelaide appreciates the support of local sponsors of this AFL coverage. Stratco, for all your hardware and home improvement needs. Trust RAA Insurance to look after your possessions. Trust Got Hi-Fi. Best advice, low price. And Booze Brothers, proudly South Australian owned. Well, what a beautiful sight that is. And where else would you want to be on a Saturday night in Adelaide when the showdown's on, the moon shining brightly, and this huge crowd enjoying a terrific first half of football. The Crows lead by 27 points. They played their best half for season 2004. It's been a great atmosphere right around this stadium. Let's head down to Tiffany Cherry and Mark Aston. Mate, you sound excited, and I love it when you are excited. Uh, there was some suggestion that there was a report in that quarter there was a bit of a to-do between Wilson and also John Cock. I spoke to the umpires, no report at this stage. Tip. And interesting to note, Warren Treadray gathered the troops together before they came off at half-time and was quite animated, obviously trying to rev them up. It's quite unusual for him to do that. Also, a couple of injury concerns. Gavin Wanganin, as I said before, he hurt his right leg, looks like his lower leg, and also Adam Kinsey came up with a slight groin strain, so just keep your eye on those two guys. Thanks, Tip. So, some question marks over a couple of the Port Adelaide stars. And uh, we were talking just at half-time about Peter Bergwijn cleaning disposals. Chad Corns has had 12 for Port Adelaide, but Chris, not a lot really happening for Port Adelaide. Not a lot of good players so far. No, certainly not. And again, certainly none in that second quarter. And we saw Cassisi, Schofield, Kingsley get plenty of the ball in the first quarter, but just lost all the run through the midfield in that second quarter. Completely dominated uh, by Adelaide. Adelaide's on ball is just getting the, their first hand of the footy, which they haven't done for quite a few weeks. Port need to find something. They need to manufacture a winner on ball. Maybe free up a Kane Corns who can get the ball on a few occasions. Mark Williams with some work to do. The Crows, on the other hand, things going along nicely. They just need to start well and just click back into gear again. Well, Adelaide haven't won a third quarter for the entire season, Chris. So this will be the test. It's not a good stat, is it, KB? No, it's not. But they probably haven't played as well as what they've played in that first half. But they've never played exactly, KB. They've never been in this position this year where they've just felt really confident. Crowd finding their noise once again. Michael Wilson in the midfield for Port. Roger James and Peter Burgoyne join, joining him in there. That's a class act. Second half set to get underway. Adelaide by 27 points. Huge crowd waiting for the power to hit back. Brogan up against Clark to get this underway. 
negative hit. Wilson, the first clearance. Ju. You talk about Adelaide having not won a third quarter. This is a team, Port Adelaide, that thrives on third quarters. They yeah, certainly are. And this is a bloke who thrives on kicking the ball from 55 metres out. Had a lot of trouble with these groin over the last 12 to 18 months. Wilson gets the important clearance, his first move into the midfield. But Stewie Jew, when he was on, is on song, would swallow this distance. And this is a big goal for Port, a big start of the third quarter. Stewie Jew. 12 goals, 7 coming into this game. That is a perfect shot for the man that thumps it a mile. He'd be disappointed. And still went the required distance. A little bit lazy, just tugged it to the right. Well, they've been lazy all night, I think, Port Adelaide. Not a lot of respect shown, and they're paying the price on the scoreboard. Begley brings the ball back into play, then runs hard. Took it from Doughty to Massey. Plenty of run on the legs. Short to Stengline. Brogan very close to the man on the mark. Rusciuto comes away from centre wing. Tyson Edwards is the target. Playing in front, Burton. Trying to tickle the ball along in front. Does well, squeezes oh. up, bounces wrong side of the post. For a behind. 73 plays, 46. Goes by 27 points. Bishop. Will bring the ball back into play. Brogan is going to be the target. McGregor made ground. Brogan with clean hands. Is that half back? Actually, the Crows have done well in pushing back. Certainly have. I mean, this is where Port broke down in the second quarter. No run at all. Just forced to bomb the ball on. Tread Ray is always going to be the target. They had him in his sights. Taken by Henschel. Cool head for a young player to sting line. Short to carry. Who's looked very lively across the half forward line tonight? Chips it in short. Clark just cruises onto the ball and will be shooting from around about 50 metres. And Matthew Clark has only kicked 31 goals in 209 games. So I think it's fair to say he's not really a goal kicker, Chris. No, he's not, but I wouldn't underestimate him. That's for sure. He is genuinely within 40 metres, a pretty accurate sort of kick this distance will just force him to over kick a fraction well he's kicked two goals for the season Matthew Clark from right on 50 starts it right brings it back to the line it's touched so two behind so far in this quarter of the Crows the one to steward you for Port Adelaide at the other end Bishop to bring it in. He wants Brogan. Burton in front. Corns did well to slap it down. Only as far as Rusciuto, oh, though. Clever handball. Stengline. He's still going, Rusciuto. Gets it off McLeod. One step to the goal square. It should suit Port Adelaide. Big pack forms. Burton tried to take the impossible. Wangley. Away he goes. Poulton. No one to kick to, though. Again, Adelaide. Doing well. Jericho. Forces Polby just handball the first has lost it. Turnovers arrive. Burton. He didn't manage, couldn't get a kick. Here's Jericho again. That's a throw. Play on. McLeod. Rusciuto. The coming. chance combined. The captain finishes. Gonna be home. Combining a couple of times already in this third term, the two stars. But once again the pressure to a ground level from Adelaide started the third quarter off where they finished the second. Yes, tremendous pressure from the Crows. The challenge will come from Port Adelaide. They're a great side. Bishop goes wide. He's looking for Brogan. Off hands. Chance for Stengline. Wants to set it up to Perry. Oh, it was like a look away kick. Been taken by Thurston's. Marks in front of Welsh. Just trying to get some run from half back. Burgoyne. Just the man to do it. He's been magnificent in the midfield. Gets it across the surgeon. Comes the ball inside the centre square. Comes to James. Surgeon runs hard. Runs to the front edge of the centre square. High ball. Treadray is always going to be a target. Chance now. Even. 
kicks a goal. Two for Ebert, more importantly for the power, the first of this third term. Back to 23 points, the game. Centre clearance. Oh, McLeod didn't have it. Knew the tackle was coming. Got to kick straight almost all the time. Should know where it's going. Rashudo peels off Carey. Great leg. Got some space. The kick was perfect. KB. Can he get it home from here? Well, he can. He's got to kick it. He's got to kick it to the right-hand goalpost. In fact, probably just right of the right-hand goalpost because it does swing back late. He's kicking from the Tony Hall pocket. Interesting. Wayne Carey, right on 50. Oh. The king. He lives. You know, he should be kicking himself for not taking it to an RAA-approved repairer in the first place. Kerry's got three. Long live the King. He's looked so sharp playing across half-forward tonight. Virtually as a half-forward flanker, not sort of stuck in that goal square. Here's Clark jumping high, taken away by Stenglein. Now the ball's going to come back. The point's very good. Gary is has done it well. Spread Port Adelaide's back uh, back half. Put the ball under individual pressure. Put them out of their comfort zone. Wakeman on a half back flank. Not comfortable there. Carey with three goals against him. Gary is just working a little bit of magic. Well, he's had ten possessions, all effective. Hundred percent strike rate. Here's John Cox. He's on centre wing. Kicked four great goals in that second term. Edwards is quick. Marks in front of Wanganeen. Kerry wants it. Kerry's running all over the forward line. I've never seen him look so sharp. Well, they opened up the hole for Edwards. All the tall forwards let out to the flanks. Left Edwards to run straight up the ground. Let's go. Okay, Edwards. He's shooting from just outside 50. They lead by 29 points for Crows. Edwards. Trying to bend it back right to the line. Big pack of players off hands and through for a minor score. Let's go down the tip. Adam Kingsley uh, looks to be in a little bit of trouble. He's been in the room this entire quarter once they came out and the doctor's been down there. He also had not only his groin but his knee strapped. They've got up completely in the midfield quarter. Like Kingsley off the ground, as we said before, no car, no Franco. Uh, their midfield gone, missing completely, except for Peter Burgoyne. Beautiful kick in by Bishop. The margin is 30 points. The man with the footy is McLeod. Again, the stars combine. The Roo from 60. He's missed it again. Just to the same side. <laughs> they would have gone berserk if they went through. The crowd, the Adelaide fans. And Rashido's the man in the midfield this quarter. 17 possessions now. Six for the quarter. And no coincidence that he is working well with McLeod. Port Adelaide, well, they kicked the first goal of the quarter, but since then, struggling to get it out of their defensive 50. Schofield, chip pass. Corns, back to Schofield. That's a clever kick to Wilson. They want to get on his left. He's away now. Long kick, perfect kick. Danger man, Treadray. Oh, don't know how, but that's a perfect kick. Kick it to Treadray. He had no right to catch that ball, Warren Treadray at one stage. He had his back turned to the ball, just ran his hardest to put himself in the right spot. 
This is a very good kick by Wilson. Beautiful kick with you. You've got a key forward that can take a contested mark. You just bang it in Too long strong. and strong. It's about 60 metres, that kick. Yep. Isn't that class? Warren Treadray has four. Lining up for number five. Important kick. The skipper doesn't let him down. AGL is turning on the gas. And right now, existing AGL customers who accept a gas and electricity plan from AGL will receive $50 off their gas and a $50 AGL Energy Shop voucher. You could also save more on your electricity. To turn on to AGL and start saving, call 131245 today. AGL, Australian for gas and electricity. That man, Warren Treadray, has dragged it back to a 25-point ball game. He's booted five goals, three in the first quarter, one in the second, now one in the third as Clark again comes charging in McLeod in the centre square tonight. John Burgoyne, high ball. Fresh air shot by Lade. And pushing and shoving in that centre square, and it's take two. Well, Mark Williams, as we said, needs to do something with Port's forward line. It's all Warren Treadray. Chad Corns looks like he's the man taking up residence at centre-half forward. Wilson came over the top, Rusciuto. It was a wild handball, but John Cock is quick. Can feed it off, looking for Jericho. The man with the great hands, McLeod, gives it to Jericho. The king around the corner. Oh. Cut off that time by Poulton. Heads for the boundary line. And Schofield... Happy to see the ball over for a boundary throw-in. As supporters jump to the fence to give Wayne Carey an earful. Not even a backward glance from Carey. Boundary throw-in. Half forward flank for the Crows. Laid worked his way to the front. Rusciuto with strength. Gets the ball out to Dowdy. Kicks a high ball. 25 metres out from goal. Danger here for Port McGregor. Has been very good for John Cox. Caught in the tackle by Burgoyne. And it's a ball up. Still 30 metres from goal. Good result for Adelaide though, as we've seen. They've already scored a goal from the clearance uh, early in this game. They like the ball in this area. Terry winning the tap. Poulton has to go hard. Tyson stood his ground. Kicked off the ground. Goal. Was that McGregor? McGregor has kicked a big one. Brother's secret, but did you know that housemates have secrets of their own? 7 30 Sunday, before you begin to vote, you need to know everything about them. What deep dark secrets will they disclose? A special Big Brother, 7 30 Sunday, then 7 30 Monday, they're there, their dirty laundry. Now they have to nominate each other. Will there revelations of their nominations? Who will be the first up for eviction? Two huge nights of Big Brother from 7 30 Sunday. Gregor's third. The beauty it was at that. They've had the answers, haven't they? Every, Every time, time. Pick, they have answered straight away. Again, Clark winning in the middle, but this time it's Kane Corns. Cut off by Rusciuto. Tenth disposal for the corner. McLeod receives. Here's Edwards. Got it! Well, Rusciuto, McLeod, Edwards. Three of their best. Precision football. How many possessions for Rusciuto this quarter, Chris? Rusciuto with his ninth. Nice. We spoke about Tyson Edwards in the first quarter. How good he is over his head for a little bloke. And the Crows just so dominant in the midfield. So many options up forward. They have all the answers at the moment. And the Port Adelaide turnover about to hurt him again. Edwards, 30 metres out, directly in front. Another goal, Adelaide. Just the first for Tyson Edwards, but it's been how he's played and where he's played, it's been the winning move. Certainly has, and again on that occasion, Kane Corns gets the ball, Mark Rusciuto makes the interception, and we spoke about the Kings for the Adelaide Footy Club, Rusciuto and McLeod needing to have an influence, and they are having that in the third quarter. Rusciuto the first man of 20 touches, McLeod's had 14, he's improving, as the clock ticks by and Edwards gets his first. 
Adelaide by 37 points. They trailed by six points at quarter time, 27 points at half time. Haven't won a third term this season. They're 10 points up in this third term, but they lead by 37. Henschel, a young man in a hurry. Massey, Durishudo. Now the whistle is gone. It's coming back. And Massey has got the free kick. Just really finding his niche now in AFL football. Started with Carlton. Just didn't quite make it with the Blues. But finding his feet with the Crows. Your kick! No! Well, it's going to go to Mark Rusciuto, as we heard the umpire say. And he can have number 21 chalking up at will at the moment. Umpire Corrin Rowe. Rusciuto. Ten possessions for the quarter. Finally over the line for a boundary throwing. Mark Williams got to try something in the midfield. I know he's moved Chad Corns forward, but it's the midfield that's killing Port at the moment. Rusciuto dominant, so is McLeod. Need to find a winner there. Maybe it's time for a Salapic or an Ebert, one of the young guns, to move to the midfield. 25 scoring shots to 13. 95 plays, 58. Close by 37. All tied up on centre wing. Just under 10 minutes left in this third quarter. Showdown 15. Port Adelaide have won the last seven. They've won 10 out of 14. Clever play. Wilson gains 20 metres. Now Rusciuto. There he is. Having a fantastic game. Four of the five though. Crows colours. Is it all? Boundary throwing. Laid and Clark wrestle. Stand line with strength. Here's Carey. Rockers the ball to Dowdy. Who is quick. Short. Was looking for Jericho. Too much carry on the ball. Clean ball was John Pop. Sean Burgon. Finds his brother in Peter. Club record holder tonight. Go short. Finds laid. Now the run comes. Cassisi. Port Adelaide on the charge. Here's Treadray. Couldn't take it. He's booted five. He's the gun up forward. All oh, kicked out of the arms there of Chad Corn by McLeod, who's been decked. Just keep your call. Keep your call. Oh, it was a kicking. There he was, McLeod. Kicking in danger. Keep your cool, says umpire Corin Rowe. McLeod marks the spot. Corns. He'll be kicking from virtually right on 50. He'll take a good kick. Kick four goals for the season. Corns. It's a very good kick. Right to the line. And bundled over by Brogan through behind. Towards one of the Port Adelaide midfielders that needs to work his way into this game. Got the job on Andrew McLeod. Andrew McLeod certainly had the better of that duel. Kane Corns needs to get his hand on the footy. This is Begley for Adelaide. They lead by six straight kicks. Look out, Burton, you're gone. Free kick in the back. Brett Burton now. John Cock off the ground. Boat has come on. Fresh legs for Adelaide. Not the best kick from Burton. He's put Matner under some pressure. They're already out of bounds. Fresh legs they are. Graham Johncock's been fantastic. Matthew Bode's nearly his first run on the ball. Gary is very reluctant to use his interchange bench tonight. Normally they rotate fairly heavily off the bench, the Crows, but tonight, not so much. Lade wins the knock over the back. Rusciuto involved, gets there first. Out towards Matner to his advantage, and he's away. Oh, here comes Peter Burgle in great pace, holding the ball. Matna can have a look at that during the week and learn from it. Don't take anything for granted. Kane Corns, just a little chip over the top. Cassisi leads for him. Apart from that, it's very static just once again. Nothing, is there? Nothing. Treadray's too far away. He's right in the goal square. Kicks it high. Brogan the target. 
Burton with the punch, wants the boundary. Ebert kept it in. Burton. Cool. Calm. The Roo. He's everywhere. Oh, good Mark McGregor. Stendline. They move forward quickly. Edwards. Perry. Streaks forward. Edwards decides to oh. go long. The torpedo to the goal square. Schoenberg on the spool. It's still alive for Adelaide. Here's the man with the fresh legs, Bowe. Colton does well. But again, good result for Adelaide. Moving the ball with so much speed. Something Port Adelaide haven't been able to do since the first quarter. Matty Bowe with the fresh legs. Boundary throw in. Kerry's been good here. Clark will go for it, but Kerry's been the second effort. Not this time. Wilson stepping. And searching for the boundary and finding it. And hasn't that been the tail all night? The use of the ball. Adelaide inside 50 for the 11th time this quarter. Port Adelaide only five times, and that's not enough to win your game of footy. Port Adelaide home game. Plenty of Crows fans here. Port Adelaide winning the game as heavy favourites to make it eight in a row. Clark couldn't get free. Cassisi first at it. Another ball up. Six and a half minutes remaining. Adelaide have won the quarter by nine points. Fred Ray's booted five goals tonight for Port Adelaide. Two goals to Brett Ebert. And for the Crows, four to Graham Johncock and three to Wayne Carey and three to Ken McGregor. They've been the guns up for Stengline. Has been very good in the midfield. McGregor has always looked dangerous. Colton heads for the line. He's got a boundary throw in. Well, it's just been ugly, hasn't it, for Port Adelaide? No run out of defence. No Brett Montgomery. I mean, he provides that. He's not there tonight. Just haven't been able to get the machine into full swing. And well, the Crows, their pressure has just been fantastic. Well, well there's no Josh Carr, is there, or Damien Hardwick, or Byron Pickett, or Matthew Primus. No heart, and good one for the Crows. Adelaide by 36 points. And there's Matthew Clark. Been good tonight, giving him a real good look at the footy from the stoppages. Yes, he's got his hands on the ball. Not too many times he's been outpointed. Hudson, young man, just to take him through to the end of the quarter. Schofield with some run for Port Adelaide. Tread Ray is going to be oh, a target. Great. Tremendous play that time by Bassett. Kept the front position. Getting back is Hudson. playing game number five to Rusciuto who's looking for Carey the ball died on its trajectory taken by Brogan Burgoyne can he set up dangerous kick McGregor did well Wanganeen Corns finds Surgeon Treadway just pushes Bassett out of the contest Jude kicks it off the ground chance now for Port Adelaide Corns catches high, there's a free kick. Yep. Too high around the neck. And it'll go to Begley. Is it a bit of ink? Let's have a look at the umpire. 50 metres. You can hear it there, you had him in headlock. Jerry Woodcock is the umpire. So this could be a big turnover. Hinchel. Kicks the pocket. The Birdman's got it by himself. He can kick a goal. Runs to 40. Off target. And through for a minor score. Roger James on the bench. Only had fleeting moments on the ground tonight. They go short. Came from Schofield. Just trying to generate something Port Adelaide. Just to get that ball quickly down to this man who's out in front and's got it again. What a star he is. Warren Treadray, high ball from behind Begley against Ebert. Thumps it away. Earlier in the game, of course, Treadray was close to the goal, Chris, but having trouble getting it down to him. Now he's coming further out from goal. Yeah, and he probably panicked a fraction then, had plenty of free space in front of him, could have run and taken him on and had a couple of bounces, but just chose the other option. Ball still in their danger area. Chance for Port as late, was looking for Treadray. Bassett, boat underneath. Wilson, one step. 
not to be and behind margin back to six goals and uh, before we started this game Chris McDermott thought if Adelaide can hold Port to 12 goals they'll win the game they've only got nine at the moment double change Kerry Rusciuto come off Bock and Gallagher they've got real fresh legs haven't they? they have got incredible fresh legs we said both Bock and Gallagher hardly played any footy at all Port on the other hand their bench stretch Roger James there with injury uh, and Adam Kingsley, Kingsley with injury as well no, nothing left on the bench for Port to go to and the Crows with some fresh legs Bock at all but you just wonder how much run Gallagher and Bogue might provide in the final term Three and a half minutes remaining. Dowdy not sure. Took the safe option and chipped it over to Hudson. Crows just throwing it down here. Caught a man up pretty well. Hudson forced a kick to a contest. Big leap. Big spoil. Edwards in the right spot. Doesn't like the waste of footy. Here's Bode. Matt now, whoops, not a good handball. Here's the turnover for Port. Or is it? The bounce suited Welsh. Oh, good. Boat gets another chance. Good lead, good kick, good finish. That move of having Edwards and McLeod change out of full forward has been a winner. It's just opened up the entire forward line. Sure, sure has. And what's happened too, the ball at ground level, the Crows have been so dominant tonight. The area of the game that they haven't been good at the last couple of weeks, but when the ball's filled loose, they have got first hands on it. Just shows the deficiency of Port's midfield at the moment. Loose ball gets Crows 41, Port 24. Tells the tale, Andrew McLeod. Chance to kick another goal. 200 games. Not to be. Still in play. Just to behind. 57 points. A very important last couple of minutes here. Very important. Crows can get one more. Very hard for Port to come back. Almost a record-breaking win. Likewise, if Port can manage to sneak one, and just get within range. Kane Thorns to Bishop. Over the top. Loose man coming. Thurston. Waits. Oh. Error. Could be very costly from Poulton. And it is. McGregor into the middle. Doughty, whoops. He gets around eventually. Adelaide have got plenty of numbers here, but that's not the best kick. Bock had to stand his ground, did well. Gallagher, drumming well to Massey. Can shift to Burton, can hold. Now short, McLeod on the burst, got it. Port will rue some of their handling errors. It's also meant, Chris, hasn't it, that Wanganeen is playing on a leading player coming from the goal square rather than sort of just cleaning up. Yep, it's put it that Gary is, has done it well. He's put them all out of their comfort zone, Port, in their back half. Put them in spots they don't want to be. Expose them beautifully. Andrew McLeod with the pace. It's a tough kick, as we said, from this pocket. Got to go inside or just outside the right post. But when he's hot, he kick this. Right behind him. Will he start celebrating? No. Oh. Just lukewarm, would say, at the moment. Not quite hot. <laughs> Not his best kick. Throws by 37 points. Andrew McLeod in game number 200 tonight. Just on the stretch, taking it. Turgeon. Oh, again. Danger, Doughty. Chance for McGregor. Doughty. Centering ball. Crows can set it up. Perry, high ball. Wasted opportunity. Just rushed it. Just had to be a little bit cooler. But once again, as we've said, Port's handling errors, letting them down. There's no respect with the use of the footy at all tonight. Perry misses a golden opportunity as the Crows go inside to their field 50, 43 times to Port Adelaide, 27. Schofield finds Wilson. Time clock ticking away. Just eight seconds left for Wanganeen. Finds Brogan. Wanganeen runs hard through the centre square. They need a mark right on the siren. Been taken by Salopec. 
Now it's been paid. And Selapek, the young man from Victoria, from Nary Warren, has a kick after the siren. Kick two goals this season, just in game 16. He's got his opportunity this year through injury and Nick Stevens leaving and also Josh Franco. Yeah, the kick can play the game, no worries about that. Doesn't get a lot of time on the ground, but a big kick this one, maybe just out of his depth. Goes for the big torpedo. It's not going to quite make it. Got a score through for a behind. So it's three quarter time. The Adelaide Crows have won a third quarter for the first time this season. 14-14-99. Port Adelaide 9761. A lot of work to go for Port Adelaide to win this game. Showdown 15. Gary Ayres will be a very, very happy man. They've come out with plenty of intensity tonight. Coming up, a great last quarter at an Amy Stadium. Showdown 15. Tuesday. Six red-blooded guys are about to compete for one red-hot woman. What they don't know is that she is a he. The controversial love quest. Only ten has the balls to show. Miriam premieres 8.30 Tuesday. Toyota means business with over $8,800 of extras on the limited edition Land Cruiser Kakadu from $67,590, saving $3,500. They really do mean business. Broadband prices have dived, starting from $29.95 a month once installed on a 12-month contract. That's broadband at around dial-up internet prices. Call 1-800-131-040 now. Except no imitations. Wild turkey. Real Kentucky bourbon. Thought Big Pond couldn't get any more amazing? Check out this little baby. Starting from $29.95 a month once installed on a 12-month contract. That's broadband at around dial-up internet prices. Call 1-800-131-036 now. Rose met Vampire Slayers. Played with the viewers. Put the party! 9.30 Tuesday, Rove meets music royalty Brent. High flyer John Travolta and the John Butler Trio perform on Rove Live, 9.30 Tuesday. Uh, early in this game, they like the ball in this area. Jerry winning the tap. Holden has to go hard. Tyson's foot is ground. Kicked off the ground. Oh. Was that McGregor? Yes, 
Ken McGregor kicking his third goal and setting up the first winning third quarter for Adelaide. And they trailed by six points a quarter time. A wonderful second quarter got them a 27-point lead. And now they lead by 37 at three-quarter time. Darren Jarman knows what it's like to play in big games. Here he is with Mark Aston down in the boundary. You ran straight out at three-quarter time and spoke to Andrew uh, McLeod. What did you say to him? Yeah, I just told Mac to keep going. He's finding the ball well at full forward and uh, just tied him to back himself in, kicked through the ball and and uh, keep going the way he has. You'd be pretty proud, proud of the way the forward line's functioning at the moment. Yeah, I think the, the forward line's been very good. There's a lot of space out there. I was talking to Duck before, so everything's going well. Um, we talked about winning the third quarter. We haven't won one this year, so we just won that. So hopefully we can keep going. What's the deal? It's, uh, it's all, all enough. Now we're just going to have a crack. Good on you, Darren. No worries. Darren Jarman, of course, will be playing in a slowdown in June. Chris, if you get him on the training track with him? Yeah, we'll just sneak him into a forward pocket, let him do his bit of magic. And that third quarter, Rashudo, Stenglein and McLeod did their magic. 30 touches in the midfield to Port Adelaide, Wilson, Corns and Berger in only 19. That was the tail. And they could have put it beyond doubt. The Crows missed a couple of opportunities at goal. But you've got to get the feeling they have momentum and it's a long way back for Port Adelaide to be. And never say never, but it's going to be tough. It would be the greatest comeback in showdown history. 37 points at three-quarter time. And they're away. Burgoyne slipped it to James. He's wrapped up in a tackle. He said before the game, Adelaide had to hang tough for the whole game. Not just two quarters, three quarters. Play tough, hard, aggressive footy all game. They've done it for three. Can they do it for four? Doughty, gang tackled. Quick whistle. Still yet to clear the centre square. Three guys lost the footy. Blade. He's in the best spot, but somehow James got it. Treadray gets to the front. Bassett with a high jump over the top of him. Came back second effort, Bassett. And slowed up the handball that was headed for Sean Burgoyne. He's still going Bassett. Doughty, got to call out wide. McLeod. Needs to find the target. Beautiful kick. Perry. Can go over the top. Probably should have to Massey. Hard running, not rewarded. Welsh. McGregor. John Cox back on the ground after a rest. Wengenang. Did well. Away go Port. Plenty of players to the wide side. Look at this. Two to three. Jew. Knows he can get home from there. Stewie Jew hits the post. Hasn't been his night. One step, 60 metres. Not to be. First score of the third, uh, final term to Port Adelaide. Pass it goes short. Finds McLeod. To Bassett. Getting back was Perry. Pinched that time by Wilson. Rockers the ball to Peter Burgoyne. First fumble of the night. He's got good hands, but first time tonight that he's fumbled. Well, just again, the handball missing the target. 44,733 here for Showdown 15. And it has been all Adelaide. Close by 38 points. Don't go, don't go. He's got the free kick for it. No doubt he's got the free kick to Rusciuto. He's had a big game at possession number 24 to the half forward line. He was looking for uh -huh. McGregor. Pounced on by Burton. Good chasing that time. He's brought down by Salopec. Tracking down. But the free kick. He's got rid of the ball. He's got rid of the ball. He's tracking down. He's got the kick. Just explain to the young man. Burton goes wide. Good kick. Finds Jericho. It'd be pretty hard to stop and lead Jericho by that first <laughs> he had in the second quarter. No doubt about that. The kid's got good hands as well, knows where the goals are. Learning his craft. The Crows forward line just worked a treat tonight. Gary has rotated a few different players through there. Luke Jericho, one of those, got a chance to get his first. Just playing his fourth game. He's kicked two goals for the season, yet to kick a goal tonight. This is a big one for the young man. He's missed. Let's go down the tip. Cassisi's just come on for Stuart Dew, who went straight on the phone and not a happy man at all. Bishop going on, getting plenty of distance, almost to the centre of the ground. That's a good mark. 
What a play! What a play, Mark. Good call. First as it was. Bergwijn running, using Wanganeen. The speeds just combined. Play on, good call. Bassett just clears it, gets it out of the danger zone. It might come back pretty quick, though. Wanganeen, so good in these situations. James does well, goes wide, chance here for Port. Kane Corns, inside 50, has he got it? He has! This is my Subway sandwich. The savory turkey breast with honey mustard and cucumbers, made fresh with under six grams of fat. Well, that used to be my Subway sandwich. Now I'm the low-fat sweet onion chicken teriyaki. Tender chicken glazed with teriyaki sauce. What? Man, I don't even know you anymore. This is my Subway sandwich, and this is what I eat when I want to eat fresh. How do you not know me anymore? Close by 31 points, 14, 15 plays, 10-8. They haven't been able to get back-to-back -back goals for a long time, though, Port, have they? Crows have always had the answers. Well, maybe this is their chance. Here's Laid out of the center square. Penetrating kick in front. He's got it! The great man Treadrow. How? How did he get that? Well, he's big, he's strong, he stands his ground, he's got strong eyes, he doesn't take him off the ball. He still didn't answer the question. How did he, he get, get it? <laughs> Because he's big and strong and stands his ground, he's got strong eyes. Yeah, look at that. that. He's mean, kicked five, kicked three in the first quarter. Could he have been any closer, Nathan Bassett? Could he have done it any better? Three in the first quarter, one in the second, one in the third. Is this back-to-back -back goals for the power? Yes! They're not done with yet. AGL is turning on the gas. And right now, existing AGL customers who accept a gas and electricity plan from AGL will receive $50 off their gas and a $50 AGL Energy Shop voucher. You could also save more on your electricity. To turn on to AGL and start saving, call 131 245 today. AGL, Australian for gas and electricity. points. Treadray becomes only the second poor player to kick six goals in a showdown. Then they get another one. James and Burgoyne. Denied by McLeod and Rusciuto. How about that for talent? High ball. Corns! Out marks Carey. The two big men for Port Adelaide. Making a statement. Johncock almost ran him down. Pat Corns. Good mark by Stengline. He's been terrific. So McLeod. Poor kick. Shuey Jew. Oh, well done, Jericho. Shuey Jew, though, recovers. Back in board to Corns. May use Wanganeen. No to Jew. Can go to Treadray. Not quite. On the bounce. Campbell should get cut off. It doesn't. Brogan to the advantage of Burgoyne. Wasn't clean. Couldn't pick it up. It's still going. Henschel going to be run down. Numbers for the Crows. And there's a whistle. Advantage played. Adelaide should run it out. Not much of an advantage. Oh. And a comeback. Uh, Bergoyne was a bit stiff, wasn't he? The ball just wouldn't bounce up for him. And by Darren Goldsmith. Well. He, he, recalled, he recalled it because he called yep. advantage and, and realised it wasn't. Good call. Gee, could have been very interesting though, wasn't it? Bergoyne into an open goal. Brogan, scored by late in the end. But there's a real sense of urgency amongst Port Adelaide at the moment. Let's head to Tiffany Cherry on the boundary. The message is getting through Mark Williams just saying to his team at the three-quarter time break, you've just got to kick goals and they're responding. Over the top, Perry, whistle, holding free kick. Adelaide's way. Gee, you confuse me there, the umpire is running the other way. <laughs> They've done it all night. They've been undisciplined tonight, Port Adelaide Gate. Giving away too many free kicks. Rusciuto. It was a well-weighted kick. He found the run of Perry. He's on centre wing. John Cock wants it wide. He's put it for McGregor and Carey, the targets. They're the long bomb targets. Carey wants it wide. In front was Edwards. Couldn't take it. Chance for Matna. 
Does the crumbing to Rusciuto. Does the sidestep. Oh. Sides tracks wide to carry. Big fist away from Corn. Good defensive play. Their forward line has been so dangerous tonight, the Adelaide Crows. Perry's booted three goals. One in each quarter so far. One in the first, one in the second, one in the third. Can he get another one? Keep that crown on his head. But Treadray's booted six. Schofield somehow weaved his way out of trouble. Now the run comes. Wilson. Back to Corns to Bishop. Tumbles the ball forward. They need a lucky bounce. They get it. Bang! Stengline was hit hard by Wilson and dumped also by James. Again, a loose tackle for Port Adelaide. The 10th free kick in the second half. They've given away Adelaide only two. Rusciuto looking for John Cox. Caught in the tackle by Schofield. Ducks the head. Carey. Was looking for John Cox. Down goes Matt Nutt. McLeod back to Carey. The King. He's 60 metres out. Drills the ball in. Was looking for Bock. Now the rebound will come. Wanganin, the old head. Can he set it up here? It's Chedray. Beautiful take on the half volley. Gives it across to Salapek. Drills the ball down. He's looking for Bergdorn. He's got two to beat. Begley played it well. Heads for the line. Happy to see it trickle over. We've got a boundary throw in. 74 plays, 99. The Crows by 25 points. Been an obtrusive James Begley, but done a very good job on Sean Burgoyne. and looked alive wire in the first quarter. Hardly sighted since. You get the feeling, though, Port Adelaide, they're going to come very hard in this last quarter. They've lifted the tempo. Much more intensity. Clever. Burgoyne, marked by Salapek. He's right on 50. The young man. Goes short. Treadray! seven he has missed he nearly pulled a rabbit out of the hat he's the danger man 24 points now and good defensive effort there just of course Tread Raider just took that kick that's his first minor score yes still 12 minutes remaining in this final turn Far too early to be holding onto the footy. 50 metres. Oh. He's disciplined tonight. Simple as that. Umpire Corrin, uh, Derek Woodcock saying I didn't call play on. Out wide is Burton. Onto his left. G. Carey, oh. beautiful kick. Might not have looked at, like it as soon as he kicked it, but he just hooked it on the disposal out in front of Carey. And probably not his strength either, Brett Burton, his left, left leg. Left. There it is, though. But oh, when it counted, thank you very much. So, Wayne Carey. What a kick this will be from 50. Hooks it, still, no, just to behind. Kick the beautiful goal from 50 in the third turn, but just to behind there. They have had some chances, Adelaide, to put this game beyond doubt. They have left the door open for Port Adelaide, plenty of time left. Oh, yeah. Crowd, sensing something. The power crowd. Just want the next goal. They are so oh, loud. Again. They're not going to get it from there. Gallagher, the tap to box. The youngster, round the body, out on the floor. Gee, a reprieve for a very lazy kick. Oh, was it ever. Adelaide's pressure has been fantastic all night. Jared Schofield, the offender. And now we've got a decision. Touched off the boot. And we have a boundary throw in. So still a chance for the Crows. Clark, Thurston's there first, hot ball, Corns had it, lost it, Jericho, round the body, oh yes, oh yes! Seven seats, with a third row that falls flat under the floor for maximum cargo space. Advanced 172 kilowatt V6 VVTi engine. Vehicle stability control. 
traction control. Introducing the all-new Toyota Kluger all-wheel drive, the ultimate crossover. Where you take it is up to you. And I love seeing players just pick the ball straight up off the ground. Don't try and tickle it. Jericho. Very similar, player. very similar to John Cox in the second term, wasn't it? Grab it, goal. And both kick goals. Crows by 31 points. Wilson, tackled by Stengline, taken by the champ, McLeod, on the charge. Carey's going to be the target. Nearly took a one-hander. Carey to the goal line, kicked off the ground by Fox. He's got it. Fox has come off the bench. He's kicked a goal, his first goal of the night, and what a big one for the Crows. And well, they might celebrate too. It's been a long time since they've had a lot to cheer about. Wayne Carey picks up the loose footy again. And a little bit of luck. Well, you don't mind it. And they have every reason to celebrate. Bock with a miraculous goal, really. I think he even surprised himself. <laughs> but he claimed it. Oh, yeah. Why wouldn't you? Two quick goals to Adelaide. And we've got a free kick going back to Port. It's going to Cassisi and the power crowd voicing their disapproval of not having had one for a while. Ten minutes remain. And all of a sudden, though, it's back out to 37 points. As it was at three-quarter time. Salopet. Short ball. The shooter, good spoil. Recovery is good. It's a hit in hope, it's a hit to the interchange ball bench, he's not happy with that ball, he wants a new one. What a game by the skipper. 30 disposals now, 13 in that third turn. He's carrying on with that in this final turn. Laid to do battle with Clark. Clark just laying it down towards Rashido. Couldn't quite get a disposal away. It'll sit now for Massey. Didn't see Kane Corns coming. Given the benefit of the doubt, Wilson. And Burton went to his wrong side there. He went to his right side. He chips it to Laid. Laid up forward. Who else? Ryan Treadray lining up for goal number seven. You know, he can, he's kicked eight goals before in the game, but this will be his best against Adelaide. And the best by anyone, as I've mentioned a couple of times. Rusciuto off at the 15 minute mark again. Matty Clark off as well. But what a solo performance by the powerful man up forward for Port Adelaide. 40 metres, it's lucky seven. Carlton Draft. Made with barley, hops, and attractive yeast. Brewed in a big metal thing. Put in kegs and driven around. By horses. Poured into frosty sideways glasses. And drunk in pubs. Carlton Draft. Made from beer. Well, they've still got time when you've got a man in front of the goals who's been at seven goals. Still got nearly nine minutes of action left. If you get it down to him, he's the danger man now to the Crows, as he has been all night. Here come the power. Ebert goes to the ground, bounces to his feet. Bowed at the bottom of the pack. There's a ball up. It's just 30 metres from goal. Another quick goal to the power. And the adrenaline will be really flowing at Amy Stadium. Burton to do the ruck work, thumps the ball down. McLeod just strode onto the ball. What a kick. Spears it into the chest of McGregor. Slowing things down. McGregor has had a big night. He's had it 15 times. He's kicked three goals. Been a great duel with Chad Corns. Cross to Dowdy. Kicks the ball, looking for John Cox. Those four goals in that second turn just might have been the match-winning goals. 
backing back, oh. he's looking for Carey, that took courage from Kane Corns. He's got plenty of that, that's for sure. Now, can they set it up across half back? It's a dangerous kick. Holton was equal to the task. Burgoyne runs very hard, put him under a lot of pressure, it was thumped away that time by Begley. Wilson has to kick around the corner, it's a high ball. McLeod made it a contest, taken by Begley. Oh, at the Rusciuto, now the run comes from McLeod. Another great kick, McGregor just couldn't quite get there. Wilson tries to take it over, McGregor with a long way. Tried the impossible, didn't come off. Just under seven minutes left in this final term. Mark Williams and the Brains Trust looking on. They trail by 31 points. They've won the last seven showdowns. They're looking defeat in the face. Corns. Kicks to a big pack of players. He's looking for Brogan. Yeah. Rusciuto with strength. Just pushed off his opponent. Gives it to Bock. Danger now for Port Power. Carey couldn't take it. Chance for a crummer. Tyson Edwards had it. Lost it. Great smother off the boot. Desperate play. And we've got a ball up. 30 metres out from goal. It's been the real tail of the night, hasn't it? I mean, there were four consecutive loose balls there. Adelaide won every one of them. Port Adelaide just thumped at ground level tonight. Loose balls, 56 to 33, an advantage of Adelaide. Totally dominant. Hudson, kicked off the ground by Here's Wilson. Another. Not too far. High ball. Corns. Perry claiming it. You won't get that. Still going. Amazing stuff. Wanganin's got a stretch, and who better than the best from Ferris from 2003? Had a much better second half. Gavin Wanganin, Jack Graham, John Cock all over him in that second quarter. Well, Chris, at the start of the night in the preview, you said that McLeod and Rusciuto had to get 30 each, and they had to hold Adelaide to 12 goals. Well, let's cheer so McLeod on. He's got 25. Well, they've got 57 <laughs> between them, and Port Adelaide have kicked 12 goals. You're a genius. Any chance of a pay rise? Cochrane, no fear. Treadway had to beat two. Burton went back. Look out. Jews with him. Still a chance, Port. Sean Burgoyne. Round the body. This might go all the way. Bouncing. Rolling. Rolling. Scoring. Make it 13, Chris. Van Helsing. Your reputation precedes you. Really? No! His mission, how do I kill him, is to vanquish evil. No one knows how to kill Dracula. This winter, hunt them down. Kill them both. Legends never die. He was hunting them. Oh my God. Van Helsing, now showing at cinemas everywhere. Port Adelaide have dragged it back to a 25-point ball game. Still just over five minutes left. Hudson comes charging in for the Crows, taken by Peter Burgoyne. Waiting back is the Birdman, Burton. Still inside the centre square, goes wide. Finds the run of Jericho. Who looks a player tonight. A young man in a hurry. With coolness. For Carey, who's got the spring back in his legs tonight. Short, out in front, looking for Edwards, who lined up at full forward, changing with McLeod. It's been a great move by Gary Ayres. Oh, McLeod, speak of the devil. Centering kick to Jericho! Well, they'll be rocking in the Edinburgh pub, owned by the mother and father. I hope I've got it right. But it'll be bursting at the seams. Let's hope so, so you can get a free meal. <laughs> it's an hour and a half to go, KB. It's a big, fair drive for a free lager and a free meal. Has it stopped you before? <laughs> Jericho will be shooting from around about 47 metres. Leans back the young man. Throws the hands in the air. Straight through the centre. Two goals to Luke Jericho, both in this last quarter. 
and they have had all the answers once again port get the goal Crows have just had the answers to how to find that next goal the important one the loose ball andrew mcleod the kick to the hot spot sometimes you can just do it flying mcleod just kicked the ball to the right area and the kid was in the right spot great goal jericho with two in the last quarter and a few power fans deciding they need to beat the traffic given that there's four minutes remaining, the Crows lead by 31. Rusciuto still leading from the front, stolen by Cassisi. Salapet couldn't get boot to ball. Rusciuto, <laughs> get out of my way. To Hudson, John Cock running on for him is Gallagher. Wants it, doesn't get it. John Cock just slowing things down take a bit of intensity out of the game he looks up to the time clock says 25 minutes so he knows where the game's at uh, and once again edwards on a good lead and he is so good over here he's got a very good vertical leap very good Super. great above his head as we said before and the pros have been able to hit their targets tonight he takes his seventh mark which is great work for a little fella he's pretty keen he's just out of his distance but the use of the ball a big difference tonight Rose hitting their targets, caught far too many errors. Edwards again milking the clock. He's happy to let it run down. Play on the call. Oh well. To the goal square. Three Holding three. kick, Port Adelaide's ball. Let's call it. Brogan. No option whatsoever. Kicks to the long lead of Treadray. Had to come all the way down. Hasn't quite made it to him. Loose ball. Adelaide once again. Who else? Prosciutto. Massey. With a bit of a jig. And that's a tough kick. Trying to thread it. Two poor players collide. Play on the call. Adelaide. From Bassett. What's he doing there? Bob. Prosciutto. Stem blind. They're mucking around with it. They're sharing it. And they're going to give it up. I knew they would. They haven't got clear yet, Port Adelaide. Stengline again. What do you make of that? Not much. Not much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mark Rusciuto, 35 disposal. Gone berserk. Been a great game by the captain. And it's been a big win tonight for the Adelaide Crows. Shocking performance against Geelong. They look down and out. They have bounced back tonight. Great intensity. All their good players have stood up tonight. And we heard before the start of the game, Gary Ayres saying, well, if they couldn't perform in the showdown, it was just the game they needed to try and get their season restarted. Funny, uh, KB, it's been the catalyst for a lot of resurgences for the Adelaide Footy Club in Malcolm Blight's time. And Gary Ayres, his first year as coach at the Adelaide Footy Club. Mark Rusciuto, a key player in all those showdowns. He just loves this big occasion. A previous winner of the West End medal and a fair chance to make it number two tonight. McLeod in game 200. Massey rockets the ball off to Rusciuto. Possession 36. His long bomb is missed. The only thing that's let him down is shot for goal. He's had three pings at goal from just outside 50. Sometimes he kick all three. Tonight he's missed all three. But 36 touches, 18 kicks, 18 handles. A fair night's work from the skipper. Wanganeen across half back. Over 44,000 at Amy Stadium tonight. You see showdown 15. Ebert is on the half forward line, running with the fly of the ball. Here's Henschel. Have to say, Treadray's been fantastic tonight. He's good at seven goals. He's been a, a lone hand really up forward. And Gary Ayres feeling very, very happy and confident. He's shut up shop for the night. Well, he Elvis deserves. has left the building. <laughs> <laughs> and he deserves to enjoy it too, doesn't he? I mean, there's been no man more under the pump than Gary Ayres in Adelaide over the last two weeks. And he breathes a sigh of relief, and so he should. And he should save at this moment. You've got me confused, KB. They're Elvis leaving the building. You've got the King living in the forward line. And he's the most popular man in Adelaide tonight, Gary Ayres. He's the Messiah. The Crows have won. A magnificent performance tonight. 
119 to 87. It's a 32 point win. And he's pulled off a big win tonight. And the Crows are back in town. Well, they certainly are, Kevin. And uh, given the fact they were down by six points at quarter time, with Treadray on fire up forward, Treadray still managed to get seven goals. But it was a wonderful team performance by the Adelaide Crows right across the board. Prosciutto and McLeod leading from the front. But McGregor, Carey, Edwards, Stendline, the list goes on. Terrific team performance. John Cock got four goals in the second quarter. Luke Jericho, two goals in the last quarter. Terrific young talent he's going to be, or he is now, what a play he promises to be. Wonderful celebrations. They've broken a run of outs, seven straight to Port Adelaide. And in McLeod's 200th game, he is very emotional. He knows how important the win is. He certainly does. And he put all personal glory aside for the victory tonight. Well, there's some sort of flare gone up in the crowd, so we won't worry. Not sure exactly why that happened, but we're just concentrating on the Crows at the moment. They've brought their season to two wins and five losses. And I've got it back here on Friday night to take on the Bombers. So another big game here at Amy. They certainly have, and Essendon do not play well here at Amy. Let's go down to Mark Aston. Andrew McLeod. Congratulations. <laughs> Unbelievable. Bloody beautiful. What a wonderful way to celebrate your 200. Yeah, look, uh, we've been on the pump a fair bit, and that was uh, a special win by the boys, and one that uh, will certainly uh, go down as one of the best, I think. It's a sensation. There's been a lot of criticism and a lot of pressure put on the on the club and on you. Uh, how have you personally handled it? Oh, mate, I don't uh, read any of the stuff or listen to any of the uh, stuff that goes on, so... I just got to worry about what the coach says, and that's uh, you know that becomes gospel in uh, in our world, and uh, that's all I got to do. And if he says I'm going right, I'm getting right. And same as the boys, you know. And we know that we've had two bad performances, but the rest have been okay. And today is a uh, culmination of all those things. The signs were good early, weren't they? The intensity was enormous from you guys. Yeah, it was one thing that we uh, focused on all week is to hunt them because. Uh, yeah, we've been hunted a fair bit of the time, and today was our turn to hunt someone else. Congratulations, Andrew, and celebrate well. Thanks, mate. He certainly won a lot of deserved winner. John Reid there with um, Ian Perry. And we talk about Gary Ayres being the Messiah. Well, he's got a, a terrific coaching performance in the way he set up his forward line, Chris. Well, he coached fantastically tonight, pulled some great moves. Andrew McLeod saves the moment, and why shouldn't he? The Adelaide Crows in showdown 15, a terrific performance. They have won by 32 points. Big Pond introduces an enormous fall in broadband prices. From $29.95 a month once installed on a 12-month contract. That's broadband at around dial-up internet prices. Call 1-800-008-876 now. Enjoying the game? We'll get ready as the AFL action continues on widescreen weekend. If you're still watching the game on a standard television, you're not getting the whole picture. With a widescreen plasma, you not only experience more game, more action, more excitement, but you receive the highest quality digital picture. So for the best advice on widescreen plasmas, talk to the guys at Harvey Norman. Widescreen, the only way to view the game. Carlton Draft, made with barley, hops and attractive yeast, brewed in a big metal thing, put in kegs and driven around by horses, poured into frosty sideways glasses and drunk in pubs. Carlton Draft, made from beer. Yeah, try one of those. Stubbest squirts. The liquid centers make them dangerously juicy.
You know how Radio Rentals is SA's biggest electrical retailer. Well, now... We're big in furniture! <laughs> Buy now from Radio Rentals' massive range of quality furniture and pay no interest until 2007. Pay no interest until 2007 on big brand bedding, lounge suites, dining settings, sofa beds, recliners, entertainment units and much more. Radio Rentals' SA's biggest electrical retailer is now big in furniture. And I mean really big! For more choice and the lowest prices, Bunnings Warehouse is right up your street. 45 litre storage box, just $6. Pack of four power boards, $8.98. Electric fan heater, $19.98. GMC rotary hammer drill, only $109. Roof and gutter sealant, $17.90 per pack. And power pruner, a low $6.97. We won't be beaten on price. And that's a promise. Bunnings Warehouse. Lowest prices are just the beginning. Zero sugar, max taste. Big Pond broadband prices have dived, starting from $29.95 a month once installed on a 12-month contract. That's broadband at around dial-up internet prices. Call 1-800-131-040 now. Yes, what a great song that is when they sing it with that gusto and their second time for this season and a terrific win by the Adelaide Crows after a good start by Port Adelaide. The second quarter really did set up the win when they led by 27 points at half time and every time Port Adelaide came at Adelaide, in particular in that second half, they had the answers and the end, in the end they've run out winners by 32 points. Warren Treadray, well he's kicked seven goals and he hasn't won the West End medal, that's how good he was, but that's how good Mark Rusciuto was for the Adelaide Crows. John Cock got four goals in that third term, Kerry and McGregor were excellent, but Mark Rusciuto, with 36 disposals, was easily the best man on the ground, he did lead from the front. Well Gary Ayres, he was, he's been in a lot of strife here in Adelaide, uh, a lot of pressure hasn't he Chris? Certainly has, I mean he's been the man under the pump, he carries the cans to the Adelaide Footy Club. Coached brilliantly tonight, made some great moves, had great faith in his playing group and they rewarded him tonight. Well, here he is down in the winners' rooms with Mark Aston. Yeah, thanks, fellas. That was a bit of a ride. Yeah, no, it was very, very good. The guys thoroughly deserve it. They've been sensational all week. We obviously have copped a lot of uh, negative criticism, really, but uh, very proud and uh, they were fantastic tonight. Gary, here's Matthew Campbell upstairs. Uh, Tyson Edwards lining up at full forward at the start of the game and then at times running Andrew McLeod out of the square. What was your motivation for changing your forward line structure? Well, basically just to try and drag the Cornses and the Wakelands out of areas that they may be pretty comfortable and familiar with and just try and expose perhaps someone who wasn't as keen to go back, having played on the last line of defence for so long. It's not a great position to find yourself in, especially if the ball can get in with some speed. And both Tyson and uh, Andrew are very, very quick on the lead and I thought some of our delivery to them today was terrific and just enabled us to keep the heat on the opposition and not have to be probably too predictable. And guys like Kenny McGregor, Wayne Carey played their roles to a treat tonight and of course that's what happens, you get the four points when you do that and, and be very disciplined. Gary got some great service from the midfield, Rashudo fantastic and Andrew McLeod back to some uh, near best form. Yeah, well, it's interesting because Rue's been really pumped up all week. I think he had over 30 possessions and led like a sensational leader that he is. And it just goes to show that the test of a true champ is to play well in big games. And Andrew had that tonight with 200 games and obviously the expectations of a lot of people saying that he was out of form. But, you know, really four out of his last five games I've been pretty happy with. So he really led from the front as well. Tyson Stengline, Gary, he was, was on Burgoyne early. Burgoyne got plenty of the ball, but he ended up with 26 disposals and some of his defensive work was excellent. You always show a lot of faith in Tyson Stengline. 
Oh, well, he's just a terrific player. He's one guy that really, considering the limitations that he's got as a player, he just maximises himself every week. And I think his last four weeks have been terrific for Tyson. We had a chat about a month ago and just said that he needed to iron some things out if he was going to play in the midfield. And to his credit, as he always does, he takes it on board. And, of course, he was a super player tonight. Well, and Treadray was a real headache, especially early. Ever tempted to push uh, Kenny McGregor back? I mean, you showed great faith in your back half to let them sort it out. Yeah, it was an interesting one, Chris. It did cross my mind probably in the last five minutes, but I thought it was not so much what Ian did earlier that he got a couple of goals, and then I thought Nathan really giving away probably 10 kilos. But when I looked at the back six tonight, it was Henschel, Begley, Dowdy, Perry, Bassett and Massey probably being the two most experienced players in that lineup. So I thought they stood really strong and uh, showed a lot of strength as a group tonight. Half-time up by 27 points, Gary, and you've been in that situation before. How confident were you tonight that the way the team was playing, that they would go all the way and win by, at the end by 32 or, or win the four-quarter game? Yeah, I felt pretty good at half-time, Matty. Obviously, we have been in those situations before against Port, but I just felt that the way that they played, as in our group, up until half-time, the key indicators that we go by were certainly right up there and probably even, in effect, have been the best for the whole year. So what that gave me is some confidence to know the players were ready to go tonight. Well, Gary, congratulations. I know there's a sense of relief, but you're back to work because you've got the Bombers next Friday night. Uh, no relief here, guys. Just look forward to the win tonight and I'll enjoy it. Well done, Gary. Good on you, guys. Gary is, and that, yes, it's back to work against the Bombers next Friday night, but you'll be able to look at the tape and say, hey, look, we were played with a lot of pressure, passion, a lot of intensity right across the board. And you've got to save at the moment. I mean, they, they were under so much pressure this week, the Adelaide Footy Club. They were on a hiding to nothing, and that was a fantastic result. Hopefully the catalyst to them to getting some momentum now in this season. Yes, their second win for the season as we take a look at the match stats and we've looked a couple of times throughout the night and the inside 50s at the bottom again uh, was just i mean that's uh, indicative of how hard they fought for those loose balls absolutely always adelaide's uh, best um, uh, indicator that when they get the ball inside 50 plenty of times but the uncontested possessions and contested footy that's where they won the ball at ground level their midfield was shoot on mcleod as we've said tyson spengline absolutely dominant tonight from port adelaide's point of view uh before we get to that there is the trophy and uh, the second time for Mark Rusciuto to win the West End medal. Yeah, and deservedly so. 36 touches, uh, just led from the front beautifully, and uh, what a captain he is. Well, what a captain, and what a showdown 15 it was, Chris. Always a pleasure to work with you. Another great showdown. I look forward to the next one. You're off to the Edithburg Hotel for a free <laughs> meal and a free beer. And, well, it's been a great night for the Adelaide Crows. A convincing win by 32 points on behalf of Chris and I. Mark and Tiffany down in the boundary, all the crew here at Amy Stadium. I hope you've enjoyed the match. We certainly have. The Crows by 32 points. Good night. The 2004 Toyota AFL Premiership season proudly brought to you by our broadcast partners. Toyota. Colton Draft, the beer behind footy. Harvey Norman, there's a store near you. And Big Pond, amazing broadband. I'm Tracy Spicer. Making news on 10, US Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld admits there's more disturbing photo and video evidence of torture and mistreatment of Iraqi prisoners. The tapes shot by US soldiers allegedly include beatings, torture and rape. Armed air marshals may be sitting among passengers from as early as next week. 120 of the guards have been approved to carry pistols on flights between Australia and the United States. A 16-year-old boy is on life support in hospital after 70 high school students used shovels and iron bars in a violent brawl. The world's biggest super jumbo, capable of carrying 800 passengers, prepares to take to the skies. 
and Australian princess in waiting Mary Donaldson lets her hair down at a special concert in Denmark, headlined by acts from Down Under, including Powderfinger. That brings you up to date with all the news. Good night. Are you the next Australian Idol? You can be a part of the Idol phenomenon. To audition, call this info line now or log on to our website and you can live the dream. We want you. Adelaide, come along and show us what you're made of. Supreme. Seven straight for the Saints, but at what cost? And it's showdown time in South Australia. Good evening and welcome to the fifth quarter. It's been another huge day, Saturday football, and it started this afternoon, Andy at the MCG, a great come from behind victory by the Blues. Halfway through the last quarter, they're 27 points down, Michael, and it looked like it was she was all over. No energy at all in the Carlton camp. Collingwood looked like they were on the way back, and then something happened. It's a, it's a mystery to us, and uh, one of those football <laughs> well, miracles, I think. Well, Justin Davies stepped up to the plate, kicked three goals in six minutes. Had and never turned, kicked multiple goals no, before. that's right, and, and turned it right around for the Blues. And also some controversy at half time we'll have a look at a bit of a melee as the players left the ground at half time but also a fan was ejected from the stadium for some comments he made to the Collingwood players a Carlton fan as they left the ground at half time is this the new tight security look, the I, AFL employee look I hope so I mean obviously we've reacted from the Telstra Dome incident that featured Danny Frawley in Richmond a few weeks ago the AFL and the Victorian police and I think the football community has decided that we don't want to see that sort of stuff now a lot of people might suggest that that is a bit heavy-handed but I'm all for it I've got to say I reckon that you've got to support the people who are trying to protect the players and the coaches and that's what was happening in this case so that bloke probably needed to be ejected for the for the good of a lot of us and we'll also look a bit later at the big win by the saints seven on the trot at subiaco oval over the dockers something that sides uh, well very rarely do at subiaco oval well they'd won 13 of their last 14 at subiaco Fremantle. i think it now means that st kilda's won 16 of their last 17 competitive yeah. matches if you count the wizard cup and the end of 2003 they are without a doubt the hottest side in the competition i know that's stating the obvious but 16 of their last 17 just underlines how well they're going but um, there's no doubt the story of the day was the big win by the blues at the mcg and as we mentioned they were in front the magpies by 27 points at the three minute mark of the final term but then the blues ran on six goals Favola, the star, with six, and I've mentioned Justin Davies. Those three goals came within six minutes during the final quarter. Leon Davis kicked four, and Tarrant two. And this is the, uh, well, the Malay blue fight, whatever you like to call it, as the players left the ground at halftime. Well, we were there today, and I'm not sure you picked up on it in the, co in the commentary box, but down at ground level, there was high anxiety in the game. It was a game riddled with errors in the first half, but there was definitely a feeling out at ground level that there was just, there was a lot of nervous energy, a lot of tension, the... the, the the downside for the loser in this one was going to be pretty significant. I think both clubs are aware of that, particularly Carlton off the back of their humiliation last week. And you just, you just had a feeling that as they walked off, given the fact that they were heading to the same side of the ground, separated well, by about 10 metres. That's an interesting metres. point. With the construction at the MCG, both sides leave the ground. Their races are right next to each other. Yeah. So it, it, it emphasises the fact that there is a problem. And it was a rolling ball, this one. It looked like it was over on three or four occasions. It started with Lappin and Lockin and then it became Camp Rally in Holland and then it became Johnson and Hume and then Dane Swan jumped in and Anthony Rocker made a beeline for Nick Stevens. It was just one little spark after another and it, it almost got ugly but I don't think we'll hear anything from it. Well the star in the final quarter as we've mentioned was Justin Davies. He kicked three goals in six minutes. That was the first but really he was such an unlikely hero. Carlton looking for someone to stand up and he was the man. Well I think you or Soss or Hutto had said in the call that they really need somebody to provide a secondary target alongside Favola who kicked five out of the seven at that stage in the game and unlikely it doesn't get any more unlikely than this bloke is 
taken number 39, I think it was, in the national draft a couple of years ago. They've been waiting for him, and, and he finally delivered. Adrian DeLuca was another one of the kids taken out of the VFL last year at about 71 or 72. Another Shane O'Sullivan selection that's coming good. And that mark he took in the goal under the heat to put him back in front was... Uh, Oh, well, it was vindication for the selections that the Carlton recruiting staff made at the end of last year, I guess. Well, some bad news for Collingwood, not only with the result, but injury to Nathan Buckley, the captain. And it looked as though he re-injured a hamstring that, uh, well, was, uh, was torn about 26 days yeah. ago. So some real concerns for the Magpies. Well, it is. I mean, it seemed to happen so easily. It, it didn't seem to be a significant twist or turn. We see it here. He tried to get to Davies and then he approached Hume. It probably happened in the stretch when he right went there. to Davies. That's yeah. where it happened because he, he didn't even change direction no. to try and get back to Hume, which he ordinarily would have done. And he, so. uh, look, he went straight off. He went straight to the bench and just there was not one minute of treatment. They, they didn't look at him. They just He just nodded. As soon as he came off the ground, the Medicos at Collingwood knew what had happened and he just sat there disconsolate for the rest of the day. It's probably going to be another three or four weeks for Buckley. Well, and at least you'd think, at yeah. least four weeks. Well, and they're one and six now. They've entrenched themselves at the bottom of the ladder. They can't afford to be without the skipper. He was going beautifully when he did that hamstring. Well, so. one person, of course, very disappointed with the performance today was the Collingwood coach, Mick Malthouse. This is some of what he had to say after the match. Oh, it's a total disappointment. I just reckon that just if we had a pinched one goal, the game was effectively over. And we had our chances. The 10 yard square, we missed a sitter in the 10 yard square. They got their tail up. My men was a funny thing. It's disappointing that we've come as far as we, we we had by round six to really drop away round seven, really drop away. Supporters completely, you know, that's, that's, uh, they're supporting the club. I suspect that they would stick to it and there's others that are going to be pretty angry about it. All I can do as a football coach in conjunction with the match is work to eliminate...